Hello, today we're hey talking about 10 grocery shopping mistakes you could be making right now and costing you a lot of money, a lot of money. So these grocery mistakes are top of the list, although there's thousands, I'm sure. But <laughs> we're just going at the top of the list here. All right, are... so number one, buying what you want. Now, I never knew people did this until candace owens said she did this like four or five years ago and i have nothing wrong with her doing this because i'm sure she has her debt paid off she <laughs> makes enough money she can yeah. do whatever she darn and too that's well. the point Please. if you have your debt paid off you can buy whatever yeah. you want and she was not complaining about grocery bills or anything she yeah. just was talking about how she just every day now she may not now that she has a kid but Every day after work, she would just go to the grocery store and see what she felt like eating for the day. And I was like, what? People actually do that? A lot do. Apparently they do. And we I love did Candace. not know we this. Love Candace. Yeah, we really... this is nothing against her. No, I'm just we saying love her. this is the first time that I had ever heard of anybody doing that. I guess I'm just sheltered, but no. I guess a lot of people just go Especially right after work. Especially if they're a couple, just the two of them. And they're making, you know, they, they can afford to. They usually just stop by the store on their way home and Mike decide. And I never did that. Yeah, but you never had a whole lot of money before the kids came along. I guess along. not. So. so anyway, number one is stop buying what you want at the grocery store. Eat what's on sale. If chicken breasts are on sale this week, then buy some for this week and buy some to stock up. If it's pork chops that are on sale this week, buy some and then buy some to stock up. So buy what's on sale. Okay. Now this is a biggie. Pay attention to the prices. I do not know how many times the shelf says one thing. And then I get up to the register and it's not the same. Now, I don't know if I just have a photographic memory or whatever, but I take note of prices mm -hmm. and <laughs> um, Mike's laughing at you. I make note of the prices and then I watch as it's being scanned, especially the clearance and markdown stuff. And if I, if I find something on clearance, I take a picture of the price now almost every time. Like after Halloween, when it was 90% off, I took a price, I took a picture of everything that I bought and I was still there 45 minutes in line, them fixing all the prices, but I saved like $600. Mm -hmm. So it was way worth it. It happened to me this morning. I ran in just to get two things this morning for the boys. And I saw the price and I made sure when I picked it up, it was on sale. And I looked at the tag and that's what it said. And I had trouble as soon as I got to the cash register. And she worked and worked. She couldn't get the cash register. She could. She yeah. finally found it in the ad, but she couldn't get the cash register to do mm -hmm. what it was supposed to. So. Yeah. so pay attention. And like Saturday, I went to go get some. I went to the restore in Cheyenne and um, was looking for something else and found some stain. And I got up there and this was my fault. I had been up since six o'clock shopping in Cheyenne for us. That's the big city. And uh, I was just like, oh, I just want to get out of here. And the price was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I just took it because I was like, OK, the stain matches. I've been looking all over for the stain. It matches. I'm just going to take it. But I should have argued with them and spent the five minutes walking back, taking a picture I didn't do it, and I only saved myself a dollar, which I could have saved myself a whole lot more than that. So I was a little mad at myself. So make sure you check your prices. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. The bulk size, the bigger, the bigger can of oatmeal may not be cheaper than the smaller can of oatmeal. Yeah, and you need to really do some calculating when you see these things and you're debating on getting the bigger can or the smaller can because sometimes... I've mentioned this before, but the price may be five cents, 10 cents cheaper is all. And if you're not going to use that bigger one up right away, then uh, I would go with the, the smaller one because you're, it's like you're throwing a whole half a jar away and you're wasting half the money then instead of just yep. the five or 10 cents. Yep. And also food spoiling faster. So once that mm -hmm. container's open, yeah. it spoils faster. Yeah, go. If it's a big one and you don't use it as much than if it's a little one. So I always, if it's the same price or less, or even if it's a few cents more, yeah. like if it's like 10 or 20 cents less, 
I won't get the big one. I'll get the little one because it's not worth me opening a big container of oatmeal versus a small container of oatmeal now that I only have two kids at home. And so. it won't stay fresh as long. And that's for your prepping stuff too. Mm -hmm. I always get the small cans because you may not have refrigeration and you may have to eat that stuff within one day's time or yep. two at the most. So it really saves you in the long run mm -hmm. to buy the smaller yep. stuff. All right, guys, this video is brought to you by our Dining and a Dime cookbooks on sale right now, including our gluten-free, dairy-free, which is the green one, volume one and volume two. If you want to save money, our Dining and a Dime cookbooks are for you. We have testimony after testimony telling how they have saved money. And I got planners. I went down and got planners right now. So if you want an undated planner, I have those back in stock. All right. Number four. Generic is mm. not always cheaper. Yeah. I, again, today I had to run in and, and get mustard. And I started just to grab up the off brand. For some reason, I stopped and I looked and the name brand was the same. Well, actually, it was a couple cents less yeah. than, than the generic. So always double check it. Yep. And we are live, guys, right now. So if you have questions and you're in the chat, please post them and Mike will get them to me and I will answer them as soon as we're done. Next one is not buying food marked down or on clearance. I don't know how many mm -hmm. times I've heard people say, well, I ain't going to buy spoiled food. <laughs> it's not spoiled. <laughs> The store, a lot of times the store will buy more food than they need. And so like today, it was Super Bowl Sunday yesterday. Today, they may be marking down things like chips and dips mm -hmm. and things like that. If they bought too many and they didn't sell enough over Super Bowl. Memorial Day, they always mark down ribs and hamburger, Hot dogs, yeah. Thanksgiving, turkeys, Christmas, hams. I always get them on clearance. And so, yeah. And and like to tomorrow's Valentine's. So on Wednesday, you can count on most of the flowers that are left over. And things mm -hmm. like that are going to be, yeah. you know. And Wanda wants to know, is store brand and generic the same? Yes. that's They're interchangeable yeah. now. So, yeah. I've only come across maybe three or four things in all the years that there's been a whole lot of flavor difference. But mm -hmm. it's worth it to yeah. try it the first time. Because then it eventually could save you a lot. Yeah. If you like it. So when you see meat on clearance at Walmart, buy it and throw it in oh, your yeah. freezer. You still have three to five days tomorrow after Valentine's Day. We're going to be heading to Walmart to see what they have 50% off if there's any chocolate left. And getting that uh, marked down 50, 75% versus buying at full price. But you have to be careful. I am noticing now that the seasonal... Items are actually more expensive, even 50% off than just buying it regular. Mm -hmm. So I did a comparison the other day for Christmas and it was actually the same price to buy chocolate on clearance versus regular after Christmas. Wow. It wasn't any cheaper doing it that way when you compare ounce for ounce. So look at ounce And you hear ounce. a theme here. You have to know your prices and don't panic. You can learn them after a while. Mm -hmm. Just start yeah. out with a few. You'll get used to it. And Michael put a link in there for our price book. That's how I started off was following in my price book. You can just print it off. It's a digital download, but you can just print it off and keep it with you. And then um, that will help you keep track of your prices. And then after a while, you just get it memorized. Like I know when I see chicken for less than $1.50 a pound now, boneless, skinless chicken, I stock up. When I see a candy bar for 50 cents a bar, I stock up. So I know. Real food. <laughs> this is the next thing you should be buying. I like and drive not my junk daughter food. crazy. <laughs> uh, so oh. anyway, uh, and also on clearance, look for regular foods on clearance. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like tomorrow, they're going to have all their Valentine's Rice Krispies, Krispies and, and Fruit Loops and Lucky Charms. I think there, what was there, Valentine Lucky Charms or something? I can't mm -hmm. remember. There was a couple of cereals. All of those are going to be in clearance. Yeah. And I got cereal for the family size after Halloween for 50 cents a box. So that's pretty darn tootin' good. The next one is filling your cart with drinks. We talked Go about ahead, mother. the other day. Well, once again, 
check your grocery bill, you probably spend at least one third of that grocery bill. So in other words, if you spend $600 a month for groceries, probably $200 of that is for drinks. This is one of my pet peeves because what we do now is it used to be you would take a drink of water when you were thirsty. Now we quench our thirst with coffee, tea, juice, milk, and pop, you know, all those types of things. And we, we blame obesity and everything on processed foods and this type of thing and that type of thing. I don't think people are thinking, looking really at the real problem, you know. Stop drinking your calories. Even the healthy stuff, milk and juice. I looked up some, I forget what it was. It was a substitute for milk, one of those oats or almond or something. They were higher in calories than regular milk. And I'm thinking, how many people don't realize that? And they think this is healthy for me and I'm going to chug a lug it. And milk can be really in and of itself high ca calorie, oh, you yeah. know. So use and stop just drinking things like milk and juice, thinking that you're getting all these nutrients. nutrients. You're not. After a cup or two, you really don't get you're any. You're just extra getting nutrients. extra calories yeah. on these things. And so watch your ch kids. You know they don't need a 12 ounce glass of milk or a 12 ounce glass of juice. Don't let the teenage boys come in there and chug a lug a jug of juice because people think oh they're getting healthy good stuff. Let them drink some water, and that'll be just as good for them. Yep. Um, pay attention. <laughs> go ahead, mother. <laughs> go ahead, mother. Well, this too, Tara was mentioning this a little bit earlier. You need to start paying attention when you go to the grocery store. I learned a long time ago that I wanted to stay at home. And so I had to make sure that I was making enough money by staying home than I would be going to work. You need to treat your personal finances, and your grocery shopping like a business. You've mm -hmm. got to get serious about it. Nobody's serious about this anymore. People used to be so desperate and tight for money. They were very careful when they went to the grocery store and with their food. And people don't have to be. They just had their credit card and they just buy, buy whatever they want. You're on the phone talking. The kids are jumping around. You're hollering at them and you're talking on the phone and you're grabbing stuff off the shelf. You have got to treat this like a business and get serious because if you think about it, you're in that store maybe 45 minutes, an hour at the tops, you know, and if you can save $50 on a family of four, on that one week's worth of shop shopping, you have now earned $50. You see what I'm saying? By being careful and checking out all these tips that we're giving you. So get more serious about it. Stop just going in and say, oh, I got to run in the grocery store and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab that. Get serious about your money, your personal money. I mean, if what if you treated going to your job each morning the way you treated going to the grocery store and you walk in and you think, oh, I don't want to take any phone calls today. I just want to chit chat or play a game on my phone, you know, and the phone's ringing. I don't want to talk to customers, you know, no big deal. You wouldn't make any money. You know, you're supposed to do a good job and put in a good. That's what you're doing at that moment is your job at work. And you should concentrate on it and do a good job. When you go to the grocery store, make it a good job. You're not going to get paid for a sloppy job. And so, you know, you got to think of this more seriously. Mm -hmm. What are you uh, laughing at? I had to send Mike a message through our chat here. <laughs> Tell your kids no. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I didn't even know this was a problem either because my kids never oh, yeah, it's a got yeah. anything. I did not buy my children anything at the store. Never. You can... You could ask them. I'm a mean and cruel mother. But when we went grocery shopping, they didn't ask for um, they didn't ask for stuff at the cash register. They didn't ask for toys at the toy department. They didn't ask for pop tarts. Why? Because they knew that we only got those for special occasions. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time they ever got those was special occasions. And so um I didn't realize what a problem this is. And yeah, don't take your kids and husband to the store. Yeah. But at the same time, your kids need to be trained. They're not going to get something every time you go to the store. Well, all you shouldn't I have to did do when that. the kids asked for it the first time I took them was no, you know, no. 
you really can't say that to your kids, you know. And if you're having problems with them throwing a temper tantrum or a fit over something, you just park your basket, quietly take them out to the car and have a, whatever kind of discussion you think you need to have with them and say, this is not the way we're going to do it, you know. And you just need to do that once or twice and you don't have trouble anymore. But what happens is you get them in the habit of, okay, I got a candy bar this time. Well, next time you go to the store, they're going to beg. If you go down the toy, toy aisle, they're going to want a doll. And they kids don't have a concept of money. So they don't... Un <laughs> got the hiccups now. Oh, I don't know how I got the hiccups. <laughs> so they don't have a concept or an understanding of money. So why can't they get the doll instead of the candy bar this week? So then they get mad because they don't understand. You get mad at them thinking they're just not obeying you, but you started this habit. You're the parent. You're responsible. If they're doing this, it's because of you. Stop blaming your kids. Well, my kids always want something. No, you're the one that's allowed them to have something. So parents have got to step up to the plate. I'm sorry. Parents are so afraid in this day and age that, well, they're not going to like me if I tell them no. You know what? Or what? I told my kids no and for years, and, and they're look, actually still how perfect oh, we turn angel out. that we are. <laughs> they're still speaking to me. They actually are still speaking to me all those times I told them no. You're you're not you're being selfish in that by not telling them no and teaching them that they that they can't have every single thing in life because then when they have grow up and the first crisis hits them, they lose a job or something else happens, they'll go to pieces. They really will. Yeah. We have so many people that are depressed, discouraged, and this, that, and the other because their parents never said no to them, you know, never taught them. You have to sometimes just suck it up, buttercup type thing. Sometimes life stinks, and then you die, and that's it. Well, you know <laughs> what? Sorry. That's the way it goes. <laughs> All right, guys. This video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, and our Volume 1, Volume 2. If you want to save money on your grocery bill, we have everything in there. It is on sale now, livingonadime.com. I am not exaggerating. We have homemade cleaners. I did not know cleaners was such a big cost. We're doing a video on this. Oh, so yeah. This is one lady said that her friend minds. or family or somebody spent $50 on cleaning supplies. I don't think I've spent $50 with the oh, exception of life. laundry detergent. Yeah, in my whole life. In my entire life. Mm -mm. I can, I, I don't truly think don't so. think I have. Uh -uh. I, I'm like, how do you spend $50 for your entire life on cleaning products? Mm -hmm. So anyway, but <laughs> yeah, so we even have cleaning products in our cookbooks and Bath and Beauty. Next one is don't stick to your list. <gasps> oh, I know that's a tip that every grocery shopping expert says, but they're not experts if they're telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> they are wrong. Why? Because you lose out on so many good deals if you stick to your list. You really do. And your problem isn't people say, oh, well, I stick to my list so that I don't overspend. Your problem isn't the list. Your problem is you're just having a problem spending in general. And you just have to get your spending in general taken care of. I know that if I stuck to my list, I would not save near the amount of money on my grocery bill as if I didn't. So I always made sure that I had extra money available so that if I found deals, I could pick them up like chicken for a dollar, boneless, skinless chicken for a dollar 26 a pound. That is the same price as the chicken uh, quarters. That's actually cheaper than the chicken quarters that you get at the grocery store for 69 cents a pound. It's actually cheaper to buy the boneless skinless chicken breast for $1.29 a pound than to buy the bone than to buy the bone in quarters for 69 cents a pound. Because meat the bone is half the weight of the meat. So that's how you can figure if bone in or bone less is a cheaper deal. But if I stuck to my list, I wouldn't have got 50 pounds of chicken the other day for a really good stinking, I mean, a really stinking good deal. Well, I, I do my list. It's exactly what Tara is saying, but it's, it's, it's kind of backwards. What I do, the only list I ever have 
is what I've looked up that's on sale. And if I actually run out of something, I'll put it on a list. And, but that list, I don't even buy the stuff on that list that I run out of <coughs> until I can get it for sale or, you know, know where to get it very, very cheap. So you can have a sort of list, but it should be sale items. It should be from your sale ads. And that's the only type of list I have ever used. And once I got in the habit of doing that and sticking to that part of it, then, you know, I don't make out of a list and think, well, we should have this for dinner this week and that for dinner this week. And then I write out a list of the stuff I want to buy for those things. I look and see what's on sale and write down what's on sale and get, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, I have my list of stuff yeah, that you have I need to, to have, buy. Yeah. So she's but not I saying don't, just, don't have a list. But I don't just stick to my list. Like this is all I'm buying at the store. Now, I mean, maybe if it's my last $5 or something, okay. But I never, I made sure I never got to that point. I always made sure I had enough money that if I found something for a good deal that I could stock up. And like she says, if I don't have something on my list and I get to the store and it's on sale, then I buy it. So it's yeah. the same. We're talking about yeah. the same thing. I just didn't want you to think we didn't. We just went there with nothing. Yeah. Go to the store hungry. Do not go to the store hungry. <laughs> this is really, it's bigger than what you think. Because twice since we moved here, just because I had to go at a certain time and this, that, and the other, like I'd leave TARS and then maybe I'd stop on the way there. Oh, my goodness. I caught myself buying stuff. and I th got out of the store and I thought, I would never have bought this, would never. But now I've got enough money now that I could do it if I wanted to. But, you know, it just frustrated me to think that I went to the store hungry and I bought this stuff. And I shouldn't, especially, oh, guys, this is a double whammy. Do not take your husband and children and you all going to the store an hour before lunch. That's just like a no-brainer disaster waiting to happen. I mean, I can't even envision how bad that would be. When if you take the husband and the kids, it can be pretty dangerous. But then you throw in them being hungry. It can just be off. It can be a nightmare. So once again, like a business, you know, do you take your kids and your husband to work each day when you go to work? You know, can you imagine the free for all it would be at your office taking all of them to work? And then they were getting hungry on top of that. Think this through like a business. If you can leave the kids and husbands at home, if possible. Now, I know some of you have really good shoppers for husbands, but most husbands and kids, they just don't quite have it down pat. So, Okay, me. I'm going to do my outro, guys, because we're cutting this off for another video, and then we're going to take questions. So put your questions in there. Mike's going to send them to me. Go watch this video next. We will see you guys next time, livingonadine.com. Okay, so now back to our <laughs> life. So Mike is sending me your questions, guys. And um, yes, you don't be don't be <laughs> motioning to me over there. Um, and we're going to be talking about groceries. Um, and if my internet, did you get it set? Oh, okay. Uh, so groceries, guys, I mean, why do we keep harping on groceries? Because it's such a simple thing to save money. Because frankly, if you've got car loans, credit card debt, and you can't pay these things off, your groceries is one of the easiest places to cut to start paying these things off. So you don't have car loans and credit card debt or student loans or whatever. So Jen says, I'd love your red shirts for Valentine's day. Both y'all are beautiful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I wore it today, but I realized tomorrow's Valentine's day. So I'm going to wear it tomorrow's live show. Also <laughs> <laughs> Nick says hello from New Zealand. Wow. Oh, hello. Yeah. That's pretty nifty. I love it. When you tell us what countries you guys are from, I would like to go visit New Zealand. Me too. I really I do. I don't know. Are they letting anybody in the country there anymore? I didn't know since that thing going around, if they're it's, even letting people back in or it not. It sounds so beautiful there. Simple guy, simple life. I like the Walmart app. Now I scan the price when I'm shopping a store. Yes. Someone mm -hmm. just told me how to do that. One of our viewers. And so now I love it because now I know I scan it. So I know which prices are going to ring up wrong. And then I take a picture. So yeah, 
Rachel, yes, you got to watch the cashier ringing up the items. You are right. Aline Lane says, it's not you. I'm tired of shopping at Walmart. All the prices are different. I know. I mm. literally every single time I go to the grocery store, go to Walmart, because that's my grocery store mainly here, it rings up wrong. Yeah. And when you go through the cashier, be sure you do, you're not talking on your phone and you're yeah. actually watching what they're putting through and what the prices are ringing up, if you yeah. possibly can. Um, do we buy Valentine's gifts? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Um, Mike got me flowers the other day. I should have brought them for the show. Uh, Robin says, made the Salisbury steak from our Dining in the Dime Cookbook Volume 1. 35% off right now for Valentine's Day, guys. And used only half a pound of meat. Had three huge portions and it was so yummy of course it Very was because it was from dining on a dime cookbook and all of our recipes <laughs> have been tested to make sure they are good and easy and use the half pound anytime yeah. recipes call for a full pound cut it in half when yeah. you can um or i think that was volume one strawberry steak might be in volume two i can't remember actually <laughs> Um, Pam, yes, been having problems with the Dollar General coupons. They have a hard time overriding the computer to give me the coupons. It was $14 last time. I did get it, but it took some time to give it to me. Yeah. Wow. This kind of thing is actually starting to really tick me off. I feel so sorry for the cashiers because I can't imagine them having to deal with this every day. I know it's not long. the cashier's fault and I don't get angry with them, but yeah. stores, you need to get your act together. This is, this is really, get, it's getting ridiculous. And you know stores are doing it on purpose because most people aren't going to sit there and argue because they're in a hurry and they just want to leave. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Don't be in a hurry. You know, pay attention and don't just give up. You've got yeah. to be careful. Cheryl says, made your three ingredient peanut butter cookies. I can't remember which volume those are in. I think volume two, two I, think. I think. And they are delicious, aren't they? And so super easy. Love the peanut butter cookies. 35% off right now. Um, Rebecca, good evening from Canada. Love watching y'all. Always learn something. She always learns something. That's great. Oh. You know, so I wonder if not people get tired of the same thing. <laughs> it's not just our, it's our smarts too. Our smarts <laughs> they too. Like. Uh, I know Michael has to watch because of my good looks. But. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, do you think a dehydrator is worth the money? Well, yes and no. <laughs> so the regular cheapy dehydrators really don't do very well at all. If you're beginning, though, and you can find one cheap at a garage sale, try it It that might way. be worth it. Mm -hmm. But now we were sent an Excalibur dehydrator. Mike, look up the Excalibur dehydrator and put the link in there. This will be an affiliate link for you guys on Amazon. And, um, we got an Excalibur dehydrator as a promo thing from them like 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. probably 15 years ago. I don't know, a really long time ago. And they did send us to it. And I will tell you, we have more than gotten the 350, oh, yeah. $400 that that thing is worth out of it. So yes, just in apples alone, over the 15 years, we have saved the money on the dehydrator. But if you don't have a source for free food or cheap food, like you're not a gardener or, you know, like you have friends or family that go to the food bank or something and give you extras or find really good deals or something, I don't know that it would necessarily be worth it. Now, I kind like it being by myself because if I have a bag of carrots or celery or something, in my refrigerator that I see I'm not eating them up fast enough. I just dump them straight on the tray and dehydrate them. Mm -hmm. And then I can keep them dry. You know, they would have been thrown out in a week or so getting, they were starting to get, you know, older. And so I would use a lot, a lot of stuff. You have to have a place. The secret is to have a place where you can set it and just use it on a regular basis. I have a half a sack of potatoes now that I know I'm not going to probably get through all of them, so I'll just dehydrate them into hash browns and I'll give them to tar or I'll save some for me. They're all ready to go then. Sweet potatoes, I make them into a powder. So when tar is sick, all what she has to do is she just has to um, add warm water to it and a little bit of butter or whatever and eat them. So 
they can be kind of convenient too. It's kind of like I fry my meat up for um, hamburger to have it ready. I can just pull a packet out when I don't feel like cooking. Well, the dehydrated food is the same way. Uh, I had a jar of dried apples and I didn't feel like peeling an apple. I didn't even feel, when you have chronic fatigue syndrome, only those of you that have an illness like this will understand. I didn't even feel like chewing too much or cutting the core out of the apple, but I had my dehydrated apples. So I would just grab a handful and munch on those. So, you know, I get a lot of use out of it and I really do like it a lot, you know, but like Tara says, you have to, if you're just buying food to dehydrate, it could be a little bit more expensive. It'd be a lot. Expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have it. a good source of cheap food to make it worth it. Yeah. And just sit there and figure it out. I mean, go price a package of apples or whatever dehydrated food you buy and price it out. And another thing, too, if you like buying the dehydrated chip, like like apple chips, you know, or sweet potato chips or things like that, those some of them are freeze dried, but some are dehydrated. If you really do like those and you eat them a lot, then it would be worth it for you to oh. get it. Um, Patricia says she will also be going to mark down chocolates on Wednesday. <laughs> yes. We're getting so. snow on Tuesday. I don't know if I'm going to make it there. I'm not panicking yet. <laughs> well, if you don't want to drive in the snow, your loss is my game. I know. <laughs> oh. uh, Liz, will there be a second edition to gluten-free dairy free? Probably not at this point. I started working on it and I think we're all going to be with Jesus soon. So I'm like, um. <laughs> It was not going to waste my energy. It took a lot so. of time and energy for her on the first um, one. Ruth, I bought marked down salad greens on mustard greens, made green smoothies and froze them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, that's a very good idea. Laura, I got Christmas shaped pasta on clearance after Christmas, 67 cents for 18 ounces. That's a really good deal. Very good. Mm. Denise cereal was not a deal after Christmas until it hit 75% off. Yeah. Yes, I got my cereal for 90% off. So yeah, it was a good deal then, but not before then. Wanda, turn the big five nine tomorrow. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Wanda. <laughs> oh, happy dear. birthday. You've been with us so long. You have. Deanna, I'm teaching my 15-year-old to do the math. We discovered the more expensive bag of cat food was a dollar cheaper than the smaller, cheaper bag, which I usually get. Yes, people don't figure that's, it out. That's really a good idea. Start teaching your kids when they're little. I mean, Tara's kids and... They can, they can rattle off prices. And you know what? They're very careful at going to the store. I mean, even young, when they were like eight or nine or something, they would be very, they calculate it and figure it out. So start them early. It doesn't hurt for them to learn early. It's mm -hmm. a skill. So Yeah. Um, next is, uh, Eva says, when I was grocery shopping Saturday, I heard your voice in my, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I heard your voice in my head. Are you really going to pay seven? Are you really going to pay seven dollars for that? <laughs> so I didn't buy that item and a few Way others. You saved me twenty eight dollars and ninety eight cents on that bill. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe you should sell a recording of your voice, although they maybe it sounds like they don't need it. They can hear it anyway. <laughs> yeah. See, okay. Here's what we need to do. We need to get an app. Oh, that yeah. You play as your grocery shopping. Yes, with Tara's voice on it. <laughs> do not buy that. <laughs> Listen to me. Get it together. Do not buy that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Elaine says, has anyone's Walmart raised the price of bread? $1.32. Yep. Ours just went up also. Yep. Deanne found your Dining on Dime cookbook at her library. Very good. She's taking notes. Yay. Mm -hmm. Deborah, regular food sales, a must. We always shop and save that way. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Top Tea's Adventures. I found 14 cans of Ocean Spray cranberry sauce marked down to 60 cents each. They are so good for two years. I know. I know. I, I saw the same deal. Yes. And I, I didn't buy any because I'm the only one who some. eats cranberry sauce and I don't do sugar anymore. So I was like. It was a good it deal. Was, after I had a hard time yeah. passing that up. I did. As a matter of fact, I say after Christmas, but they had them like two weeks ago was all on yeah. sale. And But yeah. I had plenty at that point. But I did not buy any. <laughs> I was very sad in my heart. Doodle 2 says, oh my goodness, Tara, I say that all the time. Stop drinking your calories, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela's. You know, that's a good way to think of it. Drink water and then you can eat more calories. You won't be drinking them, see? 
So you no, get to eat more. just oh. be cutting calories. Oh, I see. <laughs> Angel says, I only drink a soda on date night now. Yep, there mm -hmm. you go. And that's another thing. Even though we say cut the stuff out, what happens is you'll enjoy it more when you do have something. It's like a special treat. We're not saying never, ever drink it again, but so many people use it just to quench their thirst. And if, even if you just stop doing that, it makes a big difference. But you'll find... A Pepsi tastes so good to me. It's a special treat because I don't have it that often. Robin, have you noticed, what have you noticed has been the most affected by shrinkflation? Uh, just everything. I mean, yeah. they're just making everything smaller and the price the same or higher. And so it's just part of, part of it. I haven't noticed any particular thing, yeah, but I don't buy a lot of junk type food. I mean, we buy chips and crackers, but like I haven't bought any canned goods for probably nine months or a year. So I haven't checked that stuff because I haven't bought any because I've been using my stockpile. Um, I can't remember what it was. I sent you a picture of something I bought. I don't know. About a month ago. And I had an old container of the same food from like a year, year and a half ago. And I put them side by side. And it, the new container was like an inch, inch and a half less in there. Was it different ounces too? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Texas Jan says, I drink iced tea. I buy a 24 pack of family size decaffeinated tea for two. I would just buy the tea bags. Why? To save more money. What did she buy? Isn't that Wait what she bought? She bought, that's what she 20, bought. Oh, I thought she was talking about like the bottles. No. Oh, no. yeah. So but, so if you're buying the tea bags, that's the best way to yes, go. Yes, that's good. Mm -hmm. Girl with a plan. I have not been to the grocery store for two months and I have a new perspective now. I did not he need half of what I bought. Great. Right. Saves money. <laughs> Very good. And Very she good. loves our dining on a dime cookbooks. 35% off right now, guys. Living on a dime. And you know what, guys? It's not going to hurt as bad as you think. When we say something, don't buy everything you want. It's not going to hurt so bad. What happens is you get so excited because you had self-control and you've got the extra money now that you, you gain confidence and your mm -hmm. self-esteem goes up and you feel really good about yourself. Ask probably anybody on here that's paid off their debt or like her that's taken, you know, done something like that. It feels really good that you did something like that. That's why it's, I say it's important to teach your kids when they're little people say, well, my kids don't have any self-esteem and they want them to read books and stuff. No, just teach them how to have these skills and they'll feel really good about themselves. So, yep. Um, so I totally forgot. I'm doing the great toilet paper test of 2023 tomorrow. I forgot to buy the toilet paper. Oh, you're doing it tomorrow. Oh, no. Oops. It's going to start snowing at noon. I guess. Huh? The great bidet test of 2023. Okay, so I guess I'm heading to Walmart. In the morning. Did you hear what Susie said when you were talking about uh, what do you do for a bidet when you go camping? No. She said... Put some water in the spray bottle. <laughs> they do that. I just have the squirt bottle, like the ketchup bottle. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> that, that was funny, Susie. Carol said, I always check the clearance aisles. Mar Her meat is marked down on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, your stores have a specific time mm -hmm. they're marked down. Ask the people when they mark them down, and usually they'll tell you. Trish mm -hmm. says, thanks up on the holiday. Head thanks for the heads up on the holiday clearance. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Cheryl loves you, mother. Oh, thank you. Cheryl's also another Cheryl says she we look beautiful and round. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Vanessa, I only drink water, one cup of coffee in the morning, occasionally a V8. Mm-hmm. That's the way to do it. Barbara, one cup of coffee every morning, the water the rest of the day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now we'll say I have a tea issue. I do drink my tea, but I only use like two tea bags a day. Two sometimes yeah. if it's a really bad day, I'll have three tea bags. <laughs> but I only do two tea and bags. Usually. I drink two cups of coffee, but I think it calls for a tablespoon of coffee to make one cup, and I use a teaspoon of coffee. So if I so drink she drinks flavored water. So I drink flavored water. <laughs> Cheryl, what are you doing to cut back eating sugar since it's in everything? I just don't eat everything. I mean, I just, I don't, I, I yeah. Don't ask uh, me what to do to cut back on sugar. <laughs> Lynn, don't buy stuff ready to eat. Cook your own, control the sugar you put in your recipes. Yeah, I mean, cooking at home is probably yes and no. People have this thing of cooking at home, like it's going to take you hours to cook at home. I don't spend more than 15 or 20 minutes on dinner. 
I don't. I don't have the energy. I don't want to do it. I don't like cooking. So, yeah, I mean, make the easy recipes like in our dining and dining cookbooks. That's why yeah. they're quick and easy and everybody loves Most them. Most families are happy with a hot dog and some french fries or chips or something. You don't have to have huge meals Mother, every night. Please stop saying that. What? Do you know what's going to happen in the comments? I know what's going to happen in the comments. But it's the truth. Your family doesn't want a big gourmet dinner half the time, you know. And they can have pizza. There's nothing wrong with pizza. I'm going to let mom moderate the comments on this one. <laughs> Diana, weigh your produce. Iceberg lettuce is $1.69 a head. I weighed two heads. One was a pound. One was a pound and a half. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 I, always, I don't weigh it, but I feel them and see. Yeah. And like when you buy bananas, buy the smallest bananas because everybody will eat one banana mm -hmm. and it costs less to buy the small ones. Francis, I always check my receipt before I leave the grocery store. I found lots of mistakes. Yep. Yeah. Barbara, we took our son with us shopping and he never asked either. So mm -hmm. on a Friday, was a treat ice cream one day a week? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Diana, yay. Jill, you told them no. And now Tara makes money teaching others to say no. <laughs> That's good. That's ironic, isn't it? That <laughs> is good, yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you want to discuss that or no? We can. Are you sure? Yeah. Did you? Can you read what that says? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Let me see. Are you going to tell them the whole spiel? Well, that's it. What all do I tell them? The whole spiel? Okay. You guys are getting the news first. Well, it may not even be Janet news. wants. Janet wants to know, is Jill moving? Am I moving? Oh, Tara. Um, I don't know if I'm moving for sure. It started out, I don't know, how long ago was it? Three weeks ago or something? The house that backs up to Tara's... Um, Tara's house is going up for sale. And so we kind of tossed around the idea of me moving there because then she'd know who her neighbors were and I'd know who my neighbors were. And it would be very handy for us in so many ways being closer because now Wednesday it's going to be snow. So I can't come do the live stream where if I live that close, I could just walk over, you know, for the live stream, a whole bunch of little things like that. It'd be nicer. Well, Tara went inside. They haven't put the house up on sale yet, but she went inside, took pictures of it. And it was really bad. We're talking really, really bad inside. And so we kind of tossed the idea out of me actually buying. It's not going to go up for sale in three, until three months. So we kind of shelled the idea. Well, then in between now and then, I had kind of a bad experience with my neighbor. I've never done that before. I have never had a bad neighbor I didn't even know. I had my neighbors threatening to kill me. Well, I know and you burn have. down my house. I know you have. But I've never had a bad, I don't even know my neighbors, really. This person, I've only met them three times just to say hello. And all three times, I took them cookies, believe it or not. And the thing is, do I say what all was happening? So, so here's the thing. So because we don't have a four-wheel drive, we can't always get over to mom's right away to plow her driveway. Usually it's like 24 hours because the city doesn't plow our neighborhood streets here. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait for the city to go down mom's road before we can get down her road to plow her driveway. Then she keeps calling and saying, well, don't come shovel the well, snow. It's now here's the thing. Hold on. I got Oh, listen, to say I want to <laughs> my side of this now. <laughs> She keeps we saying, close by. <laughs> she keeps saying, don't come over and shovel the snow. But if we don't go over and shovel, it will melt and turn into an ice sheet. And then it's going to snow more. And then we're going to be chipping ice. So we have to shovel her snow. Oh, yeah, for that. We have to shovel her snow. So we can't just not go over just because she doesn't have any place to go and shovel the snow. But... Her neighbor, unasked, was going over and clearing your driveway. Well, only three times, Tar and Mike, have, in two winters, they haven't been over to shovel my snow. One time they Within were in Colorado. Within 48 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One time they went and they weren't even in town when we got the snow. And I don't worry about it. Everybody wants to shovel my driveway, but I'm not going to get out and drive on snowy roads. So why shovel my driveway if I'm not going to even leave the house for two weeks? That's why we shovel the driveway. Because so, of the ice. 
So, and so I've only ahead. had ice two times that I couldn't get no, out of. you'll have it. That's because we shovel it. So now maybe I won't move because now I know what kind of neighbors I'm going to get. But anyway, this guy was horrible. I've never asked him to shovel my driveway or do anything. <laughs> Not once. And, you know, and I take him cookies. Yeah. And every time he does it, I run over and take cookies and thank him again, you know, for doing He's only done it three times. And so, um, and he does it for other people too. It's not just me. And so he reamed me out that the kids weren't coming over instantly and shoveling my driveway. And he, I don't won't say, because I don't even want to say all the kind of stuff that he was saying to me for them not coming over. I mean, he was so hateful. I couldn't believe it. And I do get upset once in a while. And I told Michael, I didn't just have smoke coming out of my ears. I had flames and, and that type of stuff. So I didn't, so I thought, I, I was so upset. As a matter of fact, I own mom's house also. <laughs> And it, I'm well, this close to, I'm still, this has been two weeks. What and she I'm means still, is I put her name on it yeah. in case something happens so, to me. I'm this close to still going over and telling that man, if he steps foot on my property, I don't care if he was with the sheriff's department. Yes, he's going to have a restraining order on himself. It was inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. He, he was pretty bad. And I thought about packing up then because we knew, had this house in mind. And so I didn't know what to do. I went a week before I even told the kids what he said. But I have a really good friend. Oh, I got to tell him that this is so. I was so upset. I thought, who do I tell this about? Because I haven't made any friends hit here very well yet. Mostly because with chronic fatigue, you can't get out and socialize that much and stuff. And then I've been snowed in the other half or sick or something. So it just hasn't worked out. But I thought, who do I call? And I was just needed to vent. I could tell I needed to vent. And I couldn't call the kids. And I thought, what do I do? And I was praying. I said, okay, dear God, I have got to talk to somebody. And I'm going crazy here. You've got to help me. It wasn't even five or ten minutes later, my phone rings. And a friend calls me. She she's actually a viewer she's, who's become a friend. She's a viewer that I've ta been talking to for, oh, over a year now. And we talk every once in a while, you know, for a long time. We enjoy visiting. And she called and I said, I could not believe because she always gets me to laugh and so hard. She's just hilarious. And so I told her what had happened. Well, she did come up with a good idea that I kind of thought about for a while, but I'm not sure now about tearing that house. That house was so bad. I thought about remodeling it, but it, the cost and the, the fact, one that was going up for sale by our house. Yeah. And I thought about, you know, maybe trying to remodel it, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't figure a way to do it. And she said, well, just knock the silly house down, tear it down and put a tiny house on the property, you know, and it'd be right there. So I don't know at this point, I'm not actually meet, moving right now. Uh, we've got good contractors. Oh, our contractors are so good. And so if I do decide to do, figure out something to do, you know, we at least have contractors that can help me figure out what to do. So it's just up in the air. I'm kind of waiting to see if this guy does, says anything or bothers me again. If it happens again, then I'm going to have to probably move. So that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Esther, do you have a Valentine tree? No, I did not put it up this year. The construction work in my house is just a mess, yes. literal mess. Oh, my goodness. Mom and I have been cleaning. I hate to say this, but mom and I have been cleaning for three days. And now there's a film on everything again, <laughs> which is not the contractor's fault, not their fault. But no. we just had to start getting some of it cleaned up. It was just so bad. And so I did not put up my Valentine tree this year. But I might do St. Patrick's Day, maybe. We'll see if they get done in time. But um, reading the word just don't take your kids and husband to the store, period. Yes. Yeah, it's better yeah. if you mm -hmm. don't. Diane says, we both get better with age. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You know, I was thinking today, when we started doing this, I was your age. Do you realize that? There you go. Mm-hmm. I did. And I just this video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dine cookbooks. 35% off right now, guys, for our Valentine's sale and our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. These are on order, but if you want one of these, grab them. 
And some lucky customers are going to get paint spray over on the boxes of their books. So they get a bonus. <laughs> so you're going to know my cabinet colors before everyone else. Not on the books, just on, on the, the outside on the box. Just on the box. <laughs> so you'll get to see your paint colors. Although it'll probably wipe off in the mail as it's going, probably. <laughs> but um, Wanda says her husband was bad at buying overpriced meat. Yes, thankfully, I am so thankful that I have never had that problem with my husband. Thankfully. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mike's always been pretty good about He's always been very good shopping about shopping. Stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, reading the word says every time, did I say this? Every time the whole family goes to the store, the bill goes up a hundred dollars. Did I say that? Mm -mm. <laughs> That's probably wow. true. Mm -hmm. Denise, um, she said she did that the other day. She didn't eat all day. She stopped at the store to buy chicken leg. It was two fifty. Yeah. Rachel beauty questions. Johnson's baby oil safe and are good for use for under eye hydration. I think thought to ask both you and Jill because your skin is beautiful. I don't know. Probably. I, I just use the cheap so. Olay. I just use the Olay um, with sunscreen is what I use. But yeah, uh, I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, and Denise says she uses plain old Vaseline. Yeah. I mean, you could just I've use seen, Vaseline. I've seen yeah. that. A lot of people are starting to go back to the Vaseline. And Deborah says we're the best. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> wow. I don't know what all the kudos are for today. Yeah. But thank you guys. You, we you guys Maybe Mike's just not sharing them with us through Oh, the, the show. other days. Yeah. So, Tonight he's doing it because it's Valentine's, it's Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Jennifer, my husband has serious reality check when he started coming to the store with me. Unfortunately, he still buys extra items that I wouldn't if he was with me. Not much, but enough. Yeah. Now, that is one good thing. One time I say, take your husband. If you're having trouble with him, uh, not understanding how high prices are. and He wants more expensive things. Sometimes it's good to take him along so he can see himself. Well, tell him how many hours he's having to work to pay for this stuff. Well, you can do that too. But just see. to have him see what this is, you know, this bag of chips is like $5 or $6 that you want one every night, you know, or mm -hmm. something like that. And that does help once in a while to take them. Yep. Uh, doodle toot. Is there a certain day of the week that you feel or has better prices than others? No, it's just when they have it in stock, which usually on sale days, they have it on stock. And Friday mornings, a lot of places get trucks for the weekend. So those are good Some ones. get the trucks in on Tuesday for the Wednesday sales and they'll have stuff on clearance. So it just, you just have to watch your own grocery store to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, I hate shopping when they have the monitor turned so you can't see the monitor. I would not, I, if the register thing is not turned so you can see the prices, I would not do that. I would say, no, I want to see the prices being rung up. Mm -hmm. So I would stop shopping there. I mean, maybe if you don't have any other choice, but I would not shop at a grocery store that does that. Mary Ellen, what is my favorite gluten-free dairy-free recipe from your book? Oh man, all of them. The cakes, oh, the coconut cake is really good. Um, the, I would say probably the sandwich bread because it saves me so much money not paying $7 a loaf and only paying like $1.50 a loaf for the sandwich bread. It is a little bit more, it's, it's the most complicated recipe in the book, but it's definitely worth it. Cause once you figure out how to make the homemade bread, it's really not that difficult. It's just, if you don't have your fresh yeast or your fresh baking soda, that's usually the number one problem. But um, all of them, like the cakes, the pizza crust is really good. There's no reason to pay $8 for a gluten-free pizza crust. You can pay 70, you can make it for 75 cents. So all, I don't know, because all of them are just really super good. Um, Christy says she's getting our books for Valentine's Day. That is so oh, wonderful. Yay. Cool. <laughs> Wendy, off topic. What ministries do you suggest? So David Jeremiah is good. Jack Hibbs is good. Les Felnick, I listened to him for five hours on my trip Saturday when I went down to Cheyenne. So five hours of the 10-hour trip, I listened to him. And he's actually really, really good. So I would say Les Felnick, one of our uh, viewers, suggested him. And he is really good. So those are three really good people to get for started. For really good preaching to learn to understand the Bible, Jack Hibbs is really good. Yeah. He's He talks on a... a not a story, but he's very easy to understand, yeah. you know, and, and a good, easy level. But yet, if you're an older Christian, you get a lot out of him, too. Yeah. And Les Phil, what is Feldnick. It? I just started watching him today, and he's very, if you want to study 
the Bible really deep and good and get but a lot of stuff. But it's not complicated. No, it's not a complicated. It's not complicated. You'll understand it. Yeah. yeah. If you're a new yeah. Christian, you'll understand. But it's very detailed. He goes verse by verse yeah. by verse. So um, Wanda says, I figured out many years ago that the expense that I had the most control over was groceries. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello from Sweden, Helena. Ah. Wow, I used to be an exchange student there. Mm -hmm. In oh, Valentuna is where I was in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Shannon, I sent my daughter to the store. She saves us so much money. I was just, I also shop like I am shopping for four instead of six or more because we have shrunk our portions and half the time our older two aren't home. Yep. Mm -hmm. Julie, this year I'm tracking everything we are spending money on so I can evaluate if we can make any adjustments. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, good. Debbie says, I've had the Excalibur dehydrator for over 40 years and it still works. Oh, wow. 40 years. That's great. I mean, we're, I would say we're probably up to 20 now. They gave it to us when we first started our blog and website in. Well, yeah, maybe it's a, 18, it's a type like of thing. It's not complicated. There's mm -hmm. not much to go wrong with it. So it should look, last a lifetime mm -hmm. for most people. Yeah. But that's good to yeah, know. Julie that, says she loves her dehydrated hash browns the best. Yes, that's what we that's like usually what I for. do. Most apples and hash browns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Denise says be nice to the grocery store workers. They're more likely to help you when something goes wrong. Always. Yes. Always. Yep. And for me, I have a problem because I'm a YouTuber now. <laughs> <laughs> so i can't be throwing a fit <laughs> you shouldn't be throwing a fit anyway actually i don't know she don't doesn't think I've ever, doesn't. that wouldn't stop you that wouldn't stop me. <laughs> i don't think i've ever just really gone off no. i mean i've gotten upset about some stuff and they know i'm upset but i don't i've never She's cussed never. anybody out oh, no. or called them names or anything like oh, that no. but i've let them know when like one time i went and got a bunch of stuff potting soil and it was on clearance for six dollars and it ran up for 13 in february this was last year actually and it rang up for 13 and i said no this was six dollars and they weren't going to give it to me and i said listen your advertised price is right there that is where i got it from i want that price and it took a lot and i was very firm <laughs> but <laughs> they did give it to me but i wasn't mean or nasty no or huh anything. she isn't Mary says, we drink water, but it doesn't taste good. And I don't like by flavoring to put water in. What can I do? Yeah, I always put mine in a jug in the refrigerator and let it sit at least overnight. <laughs> With the top off, the, the chlorine evaporates. Yeah. And Pete, a lot of people, I don't know how they, a lot of people say, I don't like water. I hate water out of the tap. I cannot drink straight out of tap water. I drink it, but I don't like it. And I have, since I was little, we've always kept a water jug in the refrigerator and we just, I, you can buy them at Walmart. They're long skinny ones that has a little nozzle on it. Now I prefer putting the water in a glass jug with a top on it, you know, um, just because after a point, if it sits there and two, it'll collect flavors, you know, other flavors sometimes if you don't cover your food up really good in the refrigerator, but I don't have too much trouble with that. I keep it in a plastic jug. And I keep two jugs in there because when the one runs out, then I fill it up and I use the other one again. But yeah, you try, try putting a jug of water in the refrigerator. It's ice. It reminds me of a creek, you know, ice. Of course, people don't drink out of a creek anymore, do they? But it's like an icy, crisp, mm -hmm. cold creek water that's been running down the mountain. It's so crisp and cold. And try that first and see what happens. Cynthia says she made the drop biscuits out of our Dining on a Dime volume one on sale, 35% off right now, guys, for a Valentine's sale, living on a dime.com. They were better mm -hmm. than the Bisquick, and they were mm -hmm. hit, she said. Thank you. Is there Salisbury steak among the books? Yeah. Which one? I can't remember if it's one or two. I don't know. But I already talked about it. Why? Oh, because the lady just asked the question. What page are you on? Uh, I didn't see it in that book. And what, dining one? Okay, so then I think the Salisbury steak is in dining two. Is it under meats? Um, well, you didn't do that one like that. Well, hmm. I don't know which one it's in. Let's see. What would it be under? Here it is. Well, did we not put it in the cookbook? Maybe it's just on the website. I don't know. I don't remember, actually. 
Maybe people, it's people I have do been know. making it. <laughs> so it's on our website. place because people have been making um, it. It would be under B for me. It's on that one. Salisbury. Just making sure. Well, we changed it. Um. Okay. Let me look just a moment. Um. Hmm. Okay. It's on our website. It is not in our books. It is on our website. So I thought it was in our books. Yeah. All right. So livingiodime.com, just type it in and it's, you can get it right there. Um, Nicole, it's been forever since seeing you still two cooking videos. Not at the moment. We're discussing doing them in the new kitchen. I don't know if we're going to do it or not. We're going to see. Sarah, my grandson and I made four cherry cheesecakes. Oh, yeah. Sent one home with each household. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Volume two, beautiful, easy, and delicious. That is great. Mm. Actually, I have my whole like stack it. over here of cherry and blue ch blueberry pie filling. I have my whole pantry for my cooking videos that I never got. <laughs> it's sitting over there, and I'm like, oh, that would be I'm so good. sitting here looking at a whole shelf of chocolate and chips. And you're not touching it. And blocks of chocolate. I mean, she has containers, cardboard containers full of chocolate. All I have the way one, through. I have at least two shelves worth of chocolate. Chocolate that I have to sit and look at every live stream. It's a called immersion therapy. <laughs> oh, is that what Immersion that's therapy. <laughs> immersion therapy. Uh, um, Esther, I'm tired to go tired of going to a specific store for sell item in the ad and it's out of stock and more and more stores are doing it. Yeah. I know that does mm -hmm. happen. So you're just going to have to pick and choose, which, yeah. Um, Ina, uh, or wait, I have no idea what this name is, but she said tomorrow her son, Timmy, will be six years old. Happy birthday, Timmy. Happy birthday, Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> Happy birthday tomorrow. Oh. Ina, to hydrate your skin under the eyes, one drop of castor oil and one drop of oil, olive oil. Yeah, that's a good that one. That would be a that good would probably one, too. Mm-hmm. Kaylee says she loves the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. 35% off right now. Tara, do you have pets? Not anymore in the house, but we have raccoon and deer. Deerunes. Deer. <laughs> we have mice. We have <laughs> rabbits. We have snakes. We have birds. We have bears. We have bobcats. So we have everything but cat and a dog now which is probably a good, <laughs> probably thing, good thing yeah this cat and dog might not be around mm -hmm. if we did <laughs> um when will we get an update on the kitchen um probably not until it's done now yeah it's getting closer got the cabinets yeah, put in today and oh my goodness if okay i'm trying not to brag a <laughs> hundred phone calls but, later if my kitchen video does not go viral, I would be shocked. It we got the cabinets pretty. in today. It was, it looks like a thousand times better than I ever envisioned. It, it doesn't good. it look mm -hmm. good? It looks really good. I was told I thought I was gonna get new hardware and didn't even think about it. And they started putting the hardware on today, and I was like, oh, I don't even have to get new hardware. Yeah. It looks so good. And then Mike's brilliant idea. They did something with that today. And I was like, oh, that looks really good. I spent an hour and a half sanding my new kitchen table today. Got it all sanded down. It was 54 degrees today. So before they do the countertops, they might put the same epoxy on my tape. If I go with epoxy then they're going to put it on my table too also for me. So I had to get that sanded down because we're getting snow again. So there's probably not going to be any updates as far as video between now and when it's done in about a month. So. And this is a good, we'll probably talk more about it when you do the kitchen video, but this is a good tip. See, she, she could have gone out and bought all the hardware and spend money on the hardware before she actually got the cabinets done. So some, on some of these things you need to, learn how to wait you know and see well will the old actually work or can we do something with uh -huh. them but she'll we'll talk more about that when she does the kitchen who's going to talk about it you are <laughs> i'll give you the i'll tell you what to talk oh. about and then you can talk about it <laughs> diane i go around the store check sales not posted yes mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep uh Lori says i love the idea of an app that says get together people <laughs> 
There you go. Uh, Jay says dehydrators are totally worth it. Yeah, for them, yeah. they are. Put, I mean, and if you're like, if you're prepping your stockpile and you're buying potatoes and you're dehydrating, don't buy dehydrated. Well, I can't say that actually because potato flakes are pretty cheap. I can't say that buying potato flakes isn't cheaper than getting a dehydrator because it probably is actually. But for other things like hash browns, it might be worth yeah, it. Yeah, see, like I... I, my best buy is buying a 10 pound bag of potatoes. Well, that would last me for six months, you know? And so sometimes they start getting older on me. I just make them into hash mm -hmm. browns and that way I'm not wasting it. So my vacuum sealer and my dehydrator really help me not to waste food. Yeah. Uh, Simon's human says tomorrow is my hubby and I's 35th wedding anniversary. Yes. We got oh. married on Valentine's Day. Well, happy Congratulations. That's cool. Good job. Not killing him. Good job. Not killing him. <laughs> Carol, <laughs> we both have great voices. Listen all the time. Oh, thank you. So I find that hilarious because all the time I get Tara, your voice is so grating. Oh, <laughs> that's only because you're irritating their because minds. their conscience yeah. is kicking in Bothering and they them. can't stand it when yeah. they're right. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Denise says, Duncan Hines cake mixes have shrunk. Wow. Uh -huh. I did notice something like that the other day. I can't remember if it was cake mixes or what. I haven't bought cake mixes forever. I honestly have not really bought a lot of groceries. Somebody said, I well, show either. us something aside from meat. I haven't had to buy anything except for meat and a few fruits and veg vegetables like apples, oranges, carrots, celery. Those haven't been really stinking good deals. They've just been basically my normal price. But I just, I haven't had to buy a whole yeah, lot. I'm not. I'm either. getting, as soon as we get the kitchen remodel done. So because of a pro, because of, because I'm moving my kitchen sink, they had to cut a hole in my store storeroom in my basement. As soon as that's fixed, what I might do that myself tonight, maybe throw that on the to-do list. But as soon as I can get that hole fixed, um, we'll be shooting down there again. But I'm getting ready to do a $1,000 uh, stockpile haul. But my shelving's been moved out of the way. So I don't want to go buy all this food, not be able to just put it straight on the shelving. And so I just haven't been to the grocery store or bought a lot lately. Uh, we get creamer milk a few fruits and vegetables and now i don't even have to buy meat so i just don't sandy what's the best way to freeze potatoes um i don't know we don't ever freeze potatoes because no. they turn brown you'd have to cook you'd have to cook them somehow or boil, boil, boil them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. otherwise they turn brown even when i dehydrate them in the dehydrator i cook them up yeah first. mike send me the next one Lee says, received the Bible today. Thank you so much. A very nice book. I quit eating sugar and sodas years ago and lost 20 pounds. Very oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, that's Barb from Barb must be. Using oh, it's someone Barb. Else. No, it's someone else. Oh. She must be using another. Um, will you be doing most of your videos from the new kitchen or still from the studio? We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Have not decided. Banana grandma. Um, after the kitchen is done, will you be doing more work on the house? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me tell you about that. <laughs> so I've already started on the living room. <laughs> My curtains are down in the living room. Took those down to clean them. Decided I don't re I really, I didn't like them before, but I really don't like them now that they're down. They're very, very heavy, heavy. draperies. I thing. might put some shears back up because the thing is for about four weeks out of the year, we have one window where the sun shines in. I kind of need something. But I don't know. And so um, then mom sent me last night. Oh, my goodness. Look, I can't remember. I sent her The so much. stairwell. <gasps> Wasn't that cute? Oh. <gasps> I thought, do I send it to her or not? Send? I thought if I, I send it to today. her, she's going to do it. Oh, you're kidding. I thought she's going to do it. She today. doesn't need another project. The only problem is my windows are frozen to the ground. <laughs> So I can't get my windows up to do my stairway. Oh, it was cute. It was so it? cute. It's going to be as cute as my like kitchen. It. I was just like that. I've been trying to, I've been racking my brain because our st stairwell, the back stairs is very utilitarian. So some kids from my school came over to use our basement kitchen for home ec when the school kitchen was out. So all the girls were was exploring the house, of course. 
And they're like, oh, you've got a secret stairwell. <laughs> oh, you've got a secret passageway. That's what it kind of looks like is a secret passageway, secret stairwell. But we use it all the time because it goes down to our office and it's really gloomy, very utilitarian, nothing pretty about it. And I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how to spruce it up. it up. Oh, you guys are going to die. <laughs> You're just I, I shouldn't send it to her because she's working but so hard and she'll do it. I'm doing it now because the contractors have the ladder I need and oh, I won't yeah. have to go buy a ladder. It would be cheaper for me to pay them the 10 minutes to set the ladder up to use it to paint than to she would paint by a lot the by a ladder mm -hmm. so um so anyway so i started on the living room because i have another section in the living room that i can't reach because it's over the stairwell. well that i want to do have them bring the ladder and set that up for me i might have them paint that I, yeah, <laughs> paint this really little scary. it's only like not even what not even eight feet probably six feet section that we can't reach but it's Real but it's, vaulted it's high. like 15 feet up 15 feet up <laughs> over the stairs dangling over the stairs so anyway so yeah my whole house is getting remodeled <laughs> as we speak <laughs> and we didn't even know we were doing all that anybody that's ever remodeled knows how that goes you start with one thing i always say it's like on them you buy new throw pillows for the couch. Well, then the couch looks old and ugly. So you have to get a new couch. Well, then the carpet looks old, you know, with the new pillows and couch. And so it's just like snowballs. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys. Our gluten-free, dairy-free edition and our Dining on a Dime volume one and volume two. Totally separate recipes. They go together, but you can use them separately. All the recipes have been tested. Most of them take less than 15 to 20 minutes to get dinner on hand. The baking ones sometimes take a little bit longer, like homemade bread. But most of the cakes, everything, 15 to 20 minutes. I don't Just to mix cook. them up. Yeah. I don't like cooking. That's why I made the cookbooks, because I want to get in and out of the kitchen with easy ingredients that you already have on hand that are cheap, easy to use recipes, 35% off right now. Roxanne says... What? Some people were asking, they think all the books might be the same, and they're wondering if they have the old one, what is it? So if you have the old Dining on a Dime, if it's if it's printed before 2019, if it's printed before 2019, you do not have all the recipes. If it's printed after 2019, all the recipes are the same as our volume one, but volume two and is all new recipes. Okay. Roxanne, before I forget, Tara, how do you test baking powder and active, active yeast? So put baking powder in um, water and it'll bubble. And active yeast, put it in warm water. Your fingers should be able to go in and keep it in there. It shouldn't be so hot that you can't keep your finger in there, but it should be very warm. Okay. So you should be able to put your finger in there. Oh, that's really warm, but I can keep my finger in there. It's perfect. Oh, that's really warm. I cannot keep my finger in there. That's too hot and that'll kill your yeast. If you are if you have a digital thermometer, one of the best investments you'll ever make for your kitchen, get a digital thermometer. 120 degrees is the perfect temperature for your yeast to activate. And it'll bubble. It bubbles, yeah. It'll get foamy and bubble if it's active. Uh, Bandana Grandma, would your honey chicken work well with my $1.99 chicken breast? Yes. yes. It works really good. I make it all the time. Tammy, Michigan was a save a lots today and there was a freezer, a frozen chicken on sale. An older lady says she didn't want to buy it because she didn't know how long it had been frozen. Okay. That shouldn't make any difference. Yeah. <laughs> That's, and you know, this is a good point she's making. People have some strange, um, unusual ideas about food that they're just afraid of the food. Fear. Fear is the number one thing that's keeping people from saving money uh, on all of this stuff. So check into these things and make sure, am I, what I believe here, is this right? You know, she needs to look, not you, but the lady that you saw, needs to look up this stuff and see, does it hurt to buy frozen chicken? Yeah. I, you can buy frozen everything, and it's okay for me, really. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know if that sentence is still continuing or not. Sorry. Oh, dear. 
Single guy, uh, simple life. To me, it's quicker to cook from home than going to fast food places. I know. Yeah, by the time you wait in the line or in wait line. for inside, you go inside and still sit and wait for them to cook it up. I'm sorry. Go home and have a bowl of cereal for the <laughs> amount of time you sit and wait. Really. <laughs> Um, have you tried the whipped coffee with instant coffee? No, mm -mm. <laughs> haven't tried that, but it pro I don't know why it wouldn't work though. It yeah. should work. Yeah. Bandana grandma. That's a hootar moderating Jill because she's worried about comments. <laughs> well, let me tell you, <laughs> I have someone moderating comments and we're still having to moderate uh, comments. It's <clears throat> yeah, we have more comments. <clears throat> it's a mess. We're coughing. I have been drinking pineapple. And it seemed to help my cough and the phlegm I had. Does anybody else know if pineapple juice actually works? Because it seems oh, yeah. like it's working for me. It's a remedy. Yeah. Is it's it? It's a home remedy. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. I haven't had any now for about four or yeah. five hours, and I'm starting to cough a little yeah. bit. So I Sarah, don't know. it says, is a Toyota or Honda better in your opinion? So we've had both, and we did have better luck with our Toyotas than the Honda, but really the Honda wasn't that horrid. I mean, it really wasn't that bad, good. so it was about the same. Whichever one you can get for the bit. Yeah, Kimberly <laughs> says, I find portion control is really helping us. Very good. Doesn't it make a difference? Yeah. Uh, Barbara says, I make homemade cranberry sauce and use it like jam. Oh, would you stop that? I love cranberry <laughs> she sauce. Loves cranberry sauce. <laughs> <sighs> That's, I do miss, I don't, yeah, I'm just not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> Helene, I like your ideas. I've made some of them over the years and I have a garden so I take care of nearly all that it gives me yay that's very great. good yeah. uh Carol I noticed that all chips and snack crackers are affected by a shrink inflation I'm refusing mm -hmm. to buy any chips or crackers unless it's a super great deal yeah that's why at Christmas <laughs> I mentioned a few videos back that I Tara got me some chips for Christmas I'm almost down to that I buy them once in a great while but I ask them for a gift because they're getting so expensive and there's not the bag isn't as big. Shannon, they have a really good cracker recipe, yes, and Dining on a Dime, Volume 1. Yes. We have graham crackers, soda crackers, and different yes. from, you make from scratch in there. And for all of you worried about mom's grocery bill, she has more than plenty of money to buy groceries. <laughs> I got, as a matter of fact, I was thinking I've got not so many groceries. Spend the money on crackers, so don't email us I and would say how mom's starving. I would rather spend it on other fun stuff, you know, than, and I have plenty of food, so. Man, but here's the thing, guys. On a lot of things, you're just going to have to suck it up and pay the higher prices. I do not think prices are going to lower. I think that inflation is here to stay. And we have now a new level. I'm not finding 89 cent a loaf bread anymore. It's $1.32. The bar has gone up. So you're just going to have to pay the higher prices for some things. That's why we look for sales. That's why we wait for it to go on clearance. But for some things like bread, I'm not finding it cheaper than a dollar thirty-two. So, well, going back to um, her getting me the chips, you know, and people worrying that I don't have much, you know, to eat or whatever. Why I do that is how many of you think, what am I going to buy Grandma at Christmas? Grandma has everything, so what do I buy? So these are types of things that I have give the kids, you know, um, to buy me for gifts and everything because. I don't want them trying to figure out what to get grandma this year. I just give them ideas. And that, that makes them special treats to me. I don't want this stuff to become everyday ordinary. And I enjoy it very, very much. So, uh, AF wife, oh, Air Force. We know the Air Force, if that's what it means. My dad was retired from the Air Force. Yep, mm -hmm. go Air Force. Um, I have been buying clearance meats and freezing them, being stressed about getting them cooked up as soon as I defrosted them for a meal. Learning I still have three to five days. Yeah, don't yeah. stress yourself out mm -hmm. over it. You get at least three days, at least three days. Mm -hmm. Rachel, will you set up the tree and decorate it for spring and summer? Wow, everybody's worried about my tree. <laughs> now they miss it, huh? <laughs> Probably, yes. I enjoy decorating. I like, well, okay. I don't enjoy decorating. It's a pain in the patootie. But <laughs> for the hour it takes me to decorate my house, I like looking at the decorations for the entire month or months that I have those so decorations it's worth it up. For you to do so it. for me, it's worth taking up the decorations for an hour and switching them out every month or two. Cause I enjoy the prettiness of the decorations. As a matter of fact, I went to Hobby Lobby <laughs> on Saturday when I went to Cheyenne. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, I forgot to show you what I bought for the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> so stinking cute. Actually, Mike, you have to go get it. Go uh, in <laughs> by my chair is the Hobby Lobby bag. And there's a string of something. You'll see a package like this. A string of what? And go bring it. <laughs> you should so, see. When she goes on these trips, I get these pictures on my phone every 15 minutes. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I my goodness. Wow. I don't know what. A thousand dollars at Hobby Lobby this time. Everybody I can have, spend a thousand dollars. But I have. I usually go into yeah, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, you usually don't. And I think, oh, that's really cute. This time, I was like, I can't leave here. Oh, I have to buy this. I'm. I had. I literally had no room left in the car, so I could not buy anything. It's a good thing. I she literally had, all the had no room left because I had nineteen <laughs> boxes of planners in there. Which, by the way, guys, are undated planners. We have them in stock again. Undated planners. Um. Okay. Almost 400 pages. I'm filming that video tomorrow. I'm filming it tomorrow, <laughs> showing you guys the planners. I know. I'm You've sorry. got a lot on your schedule for tomorrow. So anyway, I've had this problem. You know, those long pullout spice rack things next to my stove. Mm -hmm. I don't use it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when I buy the Walmart spice bottles, it sticks up and they all knock over. So I can't use it. It's useless. But in the new kitchen, I had to put that cabinet back in where it was because I didn't have anything else for that spot. Yeah. And I had to use it. And I was like, what am I going to use this useless cabinet cabin for? So I thought, okay, no big deal. I'll have the contractors drill holes in that shelf. The poor contractors. Can you imagine? Where so my spice bottles will drop down. Oh. But then I realized... On the bottom, there's a lip the same size as the top, and it would just fall straight through. So that didn't work. <laughs> so it's been, how long has it been? Over a month, more than a month. I have been racking my brain trying to figure out what I'm going to do for my spices. Look at these strings. You mean this? Yeah. Oh, what I'm going to do for my spices. What else you got in there? So, hey. Don't look. Nobody be looking in there. Oh. There's Valentine's stuff. I for string, but I didn't see string. No, I said <laughs> she did so, say string. I'm uh, sorry. So as I was in Hobby Lobby. <gasps> wow, how cute! Do I show them or do I wait for the no, video? No, show them. Show them. You can give them a little teaser. You can show them. Those are cute. And supposedly this is the same size as the Walmart jars i find that hard to believe yeah but you never know on i always test my glasses and things do i show them yeah show them show them okay so it came like this look what i found isn't that cute is that not too stick here wait a minute let me come down to my sweater can you here let me hold it. can you see that yes is that not the most stinking cute thing. Hold on. Let me focus. Focus. Okay. Now it should focus. There. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, it was, they're a dollar each. So I got 57 of them. And that's supposed to hold a whole Walmart bottle of stuff in there, huh? It's two ounces. Mm -hmm. And that I think is this, I think it's the size of the Walmart spices, which are the cheapest spices. Mom didn't hear how many I got. I and saw so, them in the bag. No, I said I got 57 of them. Oh. <laughs> no, I got two, four, six. I got 18 of them. I don't think I'm going to need 18 of them. I think I'm only going to need like 14 of them, actually. But you couldn't buy them individually. And I'm sure I'll just use them for oh, something yeah. else. I was going to say, you can use them for So now they're things. short and squatty. And they'll fit in there okay. <laughs> I resisted. Oh. I resisted. I just, I mean, they just had so many cute, um, they had so many cute holiday stuff, well, summer stuff. They had a whole bee collection. I was like, oh my goodness, that bee stuff is so cute. Well, one thing too, that's a style of your kitchen. I know. You know, so that'll match your kitchen perfectly. So 
sounds like. And they had all the galvanized. Oh my goodness! I oh, about she showed me a picture of that. <gasps> all oh, they had, and I really didn't cute. show you. You could tell we live in Sheridan, mm -hmm. and we haven't seen the store for a while. <laughs> so anyway, the whole point of that story is, Mom and I are going back to Hobby Lobby in a couple of weeks as soon as we oh, get yeah. another. Yes, we are. As soon as we get another nice day, <laughs> it it's worth the two-hour drive each way <laughs> to go mm -hmm. to Hobby Lobby. It was so stinking cute. I just about died. <laughs> All right. Um, that will save you money if you move to a small town and you don't have sh stores to go shopping yeah, in. You true. can save a lot of money. Yeah. The neighbor says, for what it's worth, I love their cookbooks and have quite, quite a few Thank of them for you, gifts. Susie. Thank you, Susie. And let yes. me tell you, I guarantee you, Susie has bought a lot. <laughs> she buys them for gifts all the time. Thank, so you, thank you, Susie. Susie. <laughs> oh, we love it when you guys uh, tell us that because people funny. don't know. And I would be the same way. You know, I hear about books and stuff. And I, unless I hear from somebody else that's actually had them or used yeah. them. Heather says, Heather of the Mountain says, the way y'all are pers persevering through this new journey y'all are going on, going live often, that's our, we're paying off our house live shows. <laughs> Desperation <laughs> Then you'll never shows. see me live again. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> but we will cut back. This but, is what you call desperation stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Making videos that are of substance and value regularly is so inspiring. Yay. Thank I'm you. So <laughs> Um, okay, Deborah, the books are arriving tomorrow. Yay, her books are getting there. I'm so glad. And Jeanette, I've actually turned it around to see the price being rung up. Yes, I turn the thing around at the cash register. If it's not turned around, I will not let them ring it up until I'm watching. I, I don't. So um, once again, see, when I talk about it being like a business, you have to get yeah. serious about this yeah. stuff. And really, Rachel says, is Les Felnick more of a prophecy teacher? No, he's a through the Bible teacher. Yeah. Um, now, the ones I just started watching uh, happen to be prophecy because that's where I started yeah. at. But he's but just he's, starting. From he the just beginning. goes through the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Steph, we'll have to order volume two. Yes. If you don't have it. Uh, Bulls mm. from Sydney, Australia. Thank you. Oh. She's been watching, or he's been watching us for years. Um, we love Australia. Eloise, too. thank you for ordering volume one today. Oh, uh, thanks. I have no idea who he is. Amazing Grace said we had Tom Williams come to our church. He's really good too. Old fashioned Bible preaching. Hmm. I don't know who he is, but yeah, if they stick to the Bible, then it's probably yeah. good. Where do you buy your meat when it's on sale? Do you get multiple stores the same day, or do you have a store that you prefer most? So, our two grocery stores, Ridley's, which is a local chain. And then Albertsons has Ridley's mostly has meat on sale. And then Walmart will put their meat on clearance is where I get my meats here. Um, all right, Barbara, I got here late, but how did your paint turn out? Oh, don't ask, don't ask Barbara. I put coat number four on the kitchen yesterday. I am not happy. So then today I went to Sherwin Williams to get another one. And I said, okay, guys, is this going to cover? They said, no, you'll probably have to put three coats of paint on for Sherwin Williams. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll just go to Walmart. I'm not paying $38 a gallon. I'll just go to Walmart and get the $25 a gallon paint that I have to put three coats on. I was telling Tara, what I usually do is I get the kills oil base, which is, I know, nasty to use. But I put one coat of that on, and then usually I can get two coats of the regular paint on. But the oil base is what makes a difference on the, the primer. It really does help it. But the paint nowadays, it will not cover very good. So I'm yeah. afraid. So, so, you might well, one, so you might as well get the cheap stuff is expensive if you're going to have to put the same amount on. Uh, well, one person you, said that her husband works for a paint company or something. I can't remember. And she said that I should talk to the bear representative and take pictures. And I'm taking, let me tell you, I'm doing a video um, and I'm taking pictures because it's, I, they're going to get a review video out of me. She said that they want to make their customers happy and that they might try to do something. I don't know if it's worth, Here's my problem with that. Yes, they should make it right. But then if they made it right, I guess I could just say this in the video. I don't feel right reaming them up one side and down the other in a video about how bad their product is if they make it right. But they're still selling the product. Mm -hmm. So I feel like people need to know, don't buy this product. 
even if they make it right and they give me the higher quality one, how many other people are getting ripped off by their cruddy paint? But you know, a lot of stuff anymore, it's not, it's not made as well or as good. So yeah, I don't know. So anyway, did you send me the next comments, Mike? Uh, Lisa says, I tried to find the video when something caught on fire. Can you share where that is? Just type in fire, I think. Mike said he shared it, so you can have that. Everybody says Valspar, but I don't have Lowe's here. So, I mean, I guess if I want to make a, a trip, trip to the big city next Lowe's to is home, right next to, next Hobby, to Hobby Lobby. Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> be a good excuse, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, it would be worth the gas. Well, yeah, if you got good paint and didn't have to buy as much and everything. I just, it's beige. I'm going, I, guys, this is not like my first room I've painted. Oh, no. We, how many I houses have, painted have we like painted? like 12 or 15 different houses. That's I don't know. just hers. Then I, we've done Shayla's too and mine, you know. So between us, we have done a lot of house painting. I, I don't know, but, uh, yeah. Will we show the rest of the Hobby Lobby Hall in your Taiwan Tuesday video? Yeah, but I only got two other things. <laughs> and that's a Valentine's gift for Mike, so I can't show it. I mean, I'll show it. Well, I don't even have tomorrow's Taiwan video show yet. So Let's see. You've got, what, six things so far you've mentioned you're going to do tomorrow? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really torqued about the paint. The only thing today, Sherwin, was, I went in there and their tinting machine was broken, so I couldn't get it. And I was trying to decide if I should go to Ace or Walmart. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to Walmart. This is this is yeah, really because ridiculous. I've used Aces too in my living room, and it was no better. So so I I don't know. Anyway, um, Susan says she makes mom's sweet muffins at least once a week. I do too. She throws in some fresh blueberries, and her family loves them. That's a good basic uh, muffin recipe to add and, stuff to. Okay, there are two recipes that are the same in Dining on a Dime Volume 2 that are also in Volume 1 because we did not have the space in here to add all the variations that we came up with over the years since this was written almost 25 years ago. And um, so mom's muffins in here has like 13 variations and our banana bread has like 13 or 15 or some ridiculously high amount of variations for the banana bread also. Tammy says, got your gluten-free book for my daughter. Uh, oh, and your neighbor just lost a potential good friend in you. You are <laughs> oh, such a sweetheart. <laughs> well, it's funny. I called my old neighbor, happened to call me just a couple of days after that. And she said, I can't believe it. I just can't because I was the person that everybody gave their keys to, you know, for me to babysit their house and their pets and water their plants. And that's why it just shocked me so bad. I've just never not gotten along with the neighbor before. Even ones that are kind of iffy, I still, you know, did pretty good with them. So Angie, you girls have made me motivate to deep clean my, my basement. Thank you. It Very feels good. great to unload. It does, doesn't it? When you get something like that done, it does feel good. Uh, Helene says, I really like the way you are living and that you are Christians too. I heard your live. You talked about it. Take care of you. And thank you for all of your ideas. You're welcome. Thank you. Stephanie from Frederick, Colorado. Oh, Frederick. I made your barbecue meatballs. My grandma lives in Frederick. <laughs> and that's her recipe. Barbecue meatballs last night. Super good and lots of leftovers. 35% off livingonadime.com for our Valentine's sale right now, guys. Terry, how long do you leave the water in the fridge to lose the chlorine? 12, 24 hours. Overnight or 24 hours. Yeah. I just usually do it overnight and everything. Um, Michelle, is there any recipes in your cookbook for rare medium steaks? Steak <laughs> is not cheap. <laughs> no. When we wrote this, did we even put chocolate? We maybe put chocolate chip cookies in there, but we didn't. We did the, you know anything that was kind of expensive. We were trying to be frugal with it. Now the blue one, we had a little more expensive recipes, but I don't not think we have Not compared to normal people. No. Yeah, not compared we to normal steak. people. Jill, Jill, how about Tara and Mike? How much do you miss the donut house? <gasps> a lot. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. That is a lot. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. I love that place. That was like, oh, I, 
I hadn't a lot. thought about it for <laughs> Thanks a lot, Susie. Yeah. You just ruined Thanks. our day. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Robin, what is the layout in the journal? I've been trying to decide if I want to buy it. So if you go to the sales page for our undated planner, the cover is different than the video on there, but the inside is exactly the same, except it's undated instead of dated. So we did that so people could buy it all year round and you're not wasting pages. So if you want to buy it in February, you could just start in February and you're not wasting pages. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy, have we made a video on the gluten-free uh, bread? I don't think I ever, did I ever do a video on the gluten-free bread? I don't think I did. I don't think you did. I don't think I did. I, I might do it when we get the new uh, kitchen. Did we decide about the range? Yes, I just decided to go with the new one. So my cabinets wouldn't fit if I put that one in there. So that took care of that. Um, do we have brothers or sisters? Yes, I have a brother. Mike has a brother and a sister. And I have a brother. We are not only siblings. Mm -mm. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother watches these now. He's going to hear that, you know. I'm only kidding. My poor brother has helped me move so many times. Oh, he's been so good. I and my sister-in-law is my moderator on yeah. my on my. Actually, uh, so I'm so them, grateful that my kids do get along really good, and they really support and help each other. They always have for years. Yeah. Uh, Bandana Grandma said I made delicious potato soup, froze it, but when it thawed and heated it up, it didn't taste right. Do you know why? I don't know because it should taste okay. It, oh, the yeah. consistency the separates consistency the milk. Consistency would be yucky. Kind of curdles like when you freeze it and defrost it, but the, I could see the consistency. I don't know. That's taste. Now I'm not sure, but sometimes know. when you freeze things, the spices kind of lose their um too. So maybe if you respice, put more, you know, whatever you use, onion salt or salt or whatever that. But the consistency would be the worst, I would think. I've never heard that before. Oh. Georgina says she bought the gluten-free cookbook for a dear friend, and she uses it all the time. Thanks. Oh, good. Yay, that is so nice. And it's on sale right now, 35% off for our <laughs> Valentine's Day. I mean, pay off our house sale. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell we want to get our house paid off? Uh, Lynette, what about the greenhouse? We have not even started on that. I think the greenhouse is going to be a fall project now. <laughs> it's We got too many other things going on. Um and I can't really, well, I could use it now to put my tomatoes in. Here's the thing. I don't know if I want to put in a vegetable garden this year. Was, I think I might just grow all flowers, even in my raised Yeah, beds. she said that. I'm not sure. I might have two tomato plants in a container, maybe, and a couple of peppers, maybe. I don't know that I'm going to be doing a vegetable garden. I might just do flowers. I was so fed up last year. I was well, like, what did I spend all this money and water and everything? Really hard and didn't get, but I you, didn't get anything. But she sold a lot of her plants. You did sell I a lot of I sold my perennials for 250 bucks. All the perennials, black eyed Susan of all things. I have a ridiculous amount of black eyed Susan. So I put them on upcycle and it paid for almost all of my gardening supplies last yeah, year. So she did really good with the flowers. So I don't know. Ashton says she loves our French bread recipe. So easy. Huh? Even her daughter makes it. Thank you. Super easy recipes on YouTube. I have that video I made. If you get Michael, put the link in there. That's my recipe channel. Super easy recipes. It's in there. Um, well, actually, there's several recipes from the book, isn't yeah. there? A lot. But I mean, look, if you're specifically looking for the French yeah, bread, it's in there. But, yeah. but we do have on super easy recipes a lot of the re um, recipes from the mm -hmm. book. What kind of bubble bath do you use? Well, now I use the expensive stuff. So I used to just get the cheapy Walmart stuff. But then Barbara Polly sent me some when I couldn't find bubble bath of the Dr. Teal's. And it is actually a better deal than the cheapy Walmart stuff because you don't have to use as much. Oh. It's more concentrated. So it's actually a better deal to get the super expensive stuff and use less of it than mm. the cheapy Walmart stuff. So, yeah. yes. Um, Wendy, I found Malja, your tips and your show and your books have helped me get my house back in order in a um, short time. Yay! Yeah, I'm Here's glad. the thing. It really doesn't take that long. My house looks like a pit right now. I get it. But I was watching my friend Clutterbug. Love Cassie. 
I realized I am very organized. <laughs> I'm your mother and I'm laughing. I at am that. very decluttered. <laughs> Still laughing. And I did not know it. Compared to what? <laughs> Compared to Clutterbug's videos she's been putting out. I got it together. And I just didn't know I got it together. I'm just saying. Uh, just saying. Actually, you weren't bad when you were little. The thing with Tara is she picks, she's very, very messy, but she picks up her messes. When she, like when she cooks in the kitchen, it's messy all over, but she always cleans it up. So that's a good thing that you at least clean up your messes. When you were little too, she'd make mud messes and she'd track in mud and stuff, but she did clean it up. I'm waiting to see where this is going. <laughs> I'll stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> um, busy lady made chicken quesadillas at home tonight. Delish. Oh. Yay. I think that's volume one. And I think I also have a different recipe in volume two for both of those. Uh, how do you use your rice after you freeze it? I never have rice left over to freeze it. So I can't tell you, but well, I mean. There's more to that question. Um, Mike says there's more to that question. Just there a moment. Was, yeah. There was a... Here, can you hear me now? There was a follow-up question that said, uh, I had heard that you should freeze it to kill bugs, so I put my bag in the freezer. Can I put it into a container now, or do I need to cook it up? Or oh, what? okay. So she wants to know, after she freezes her rice to kill the bugs, yes, just put it into your other yeah. container that you normally do then. Yes, it's, it's good. Um, I just... Uh, anything like that, I just keep in this original plastic bag, toss it in the freeze it, and then take it out and like put it in the cat litter buckets or something yeah. like that. Mike, can you send me the next uh, <coughs> question? Now, to my defense on my garden, everyone in Sheridan said it was like the worst garden year they've ever had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know where I want to go with that. Maybe you could but... start a small one this next year and just see what happens with the Well, first portion. of all, I have to get deer fencing up. Yeah, that's so, been the biggest thing is the deer and the I gotta, animals yeah. are eating it. I got to start collecting boards from the restore to get my deer fencing higher. Secondly, I got to put my raccoon fencing in and my and my rabbit fencing in. I had some uh, landscape fabric taped on my fence and the stupid raccoons tore it all off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm having, laughing because just, because Dave, her son, was feeding feeding the birds. When was it last fall or something? Was feeding the birds, and it, they kept eating like a half a bag of bird stuff every day. It was just well, I was like, where? I just filled the bird feeder yesterday. I know they're eating a lot, but it's like totally gone. And Dave was he was enjoying doing that and everything, and he but he was starting to get upset. He said, "I keep." feeling this thing and he was so upset so um, mike and i were watching a movie one <laughs> night and mike happened to glance at the window and he's like what is that <laughs> there was a raccoon this tall dangling from the bird feeder <laughs> eating oh, stupid bird food holding on with both hands <laughs> Dave was so, he carried the tote in with all the bird food because I think he put it all in the tote and it tried to get in the tote then. And he came, stop. I was watching, staying here with the boys while they were gone and he came stopping him. He said, Nan, look what that raccoon did. And he dropped it in the entryway. He was so upset because the raccoon was eating all their bird seed. <laughs> Life of Linda wants to know regarding the paint could have been frozen before you purchased it. It could, could have, have been. been. I highly doubt it, though, because places here, even though it could have been, this wasn't like, this wasn't a freezing issue. This was yeah. like, because when it's frozen, I've had it frozen before and it kind of separates weird, or at least the, the can that I opened. I don't know. And see, I, I had know. I had a can in the garage that we used on my wall when they were hanging the curtains and it was frozen out there, but it, it did okay. So. Yeah. Hmm. Rachel says Cass from Clutterbug. Well, okay. So 
let me let me just close. Cass from Clutterbud told a story once about how she missed the track for her car tires in a car wash drive through. So she drove herself through the car wash and her car got a bit banged up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to share that story. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hate car washes. Oh, hate here's what happened so to me. Though I went through the car wash the other day, and that was a couple months ago, and I thought, well, I did. I had it in neutral, and it must not have clicked into neutral, and it was still in drive, and I started shooting off as soon as my foot went off the brake. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. You should have seen the look on the kid's face. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Charlotte, I'm sorry to ask. I know someone asked before. I have a 2017 spiral. So, yes, you do not have all the recipes. If you have the 2017, there's like 40 new recipes in this edition. And then this is all new recipes. So, Yep, you do mm -hmm. not have all the recipes if that's if that's what you're wanting. Okay, um, I have never tried Avon Robin. I don't know what is the question. Bubble about? bath. Oh, uh, I think isn't long, Avon long good? time ago? It used yeah, to be really used good. To be really Grandma good. had I some. I haven't used it for a while, but I think it used to be really good. Um, Susan, how do you control weeds in your landscaping? I live in a cold climate. I still see weeds. Okay, <sighs> well. Do you want to know how I control weeds? Uh, Can you guys take your heart medicine if you need to? I use Roundup. I think Roundup is our friend. I'm sorry. I talked to a chemistry professor in from Stanford. This guy knows his stuff. This guy was a hippie she's... organic dude. And he's like, people need to stop worrying about it. The stress of worrying about the chemicals is causing them more heart failure than any of the chemicals ever thought about getting into your food. So stop worrying about it. So I never did anyway in the first place, but I do find interesting. He would not be put on camera though, because he knew what kind of flack he would get. <laughs> so anyway, I use a combination. I will use salt water. I will use just plain salt. I also use vinegar. I use Roundup. And I use extended Roundup. Uh, so, and I use the off brand. I don't use Roundup. And 95% of my chemicals I buy at estate sales and garage sales and the Habitat Restore. Mm -hmm. So I pay pennies or get them on rebate or something like that. So, like, we have a great big drive area. I will put extended Roundup on that so it will last six months. And I only do that twice a year once in the spring, once in the fall. And then I also use preen. I really get in my chemicals. <laughs> I use preen in my garden beds where I have mulch with my flowers. Now, I will say, I don't in any of my vegetables because I do raised beds for them and there's really no need. Also, it sounds like I use a lot of chemicals, but I mulch I was everything. Just say, she always has. And I really mulch yeah. everything. As a matter of fact, sitting right behind this wall here, I have probably 80 bags of mulch left that I got for 30, was it 30 cents? I think a bag last fall, still sitting here waiting to be put out this spring because I just, I have always used wood chips. I swear by use. I swear by wood chips and I don't have to use as much pesticides or I mean herbicides because I use wood chips. Yeah, she used to have me put thick so, layers of newspaper down and then put the mulch on top and just really yeah. mulch it to death. Yeah. Kristen says, I'm tempted to buy my gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, but I'm diabetic too and can't use any grains, sugars, or starches. Then, I mean, you can use the meat recipes if you want, but if you can't do sugars, grains, or starches, really, you don't need it. I mean, the grains, sugars, and starches is what makes this cookbook good because <laughs> you can actually eat a gluten-free cake that tastes really good. So I wouldn't if I were you. Kimberly, I've seen pictures that people use light boxes or LED and put a window in front of it. And then it's like having a window in your basement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done that before, actually. 
Do you cube potatoes and then put them in the dehydrator? We have not cubed. Hi, Kimmy. We have not cubed them. We do hash browns. Hash browns is all yeah. we do because that's the way we eat them the most. And we even have a video, I think, on doing the hash browns mm -hmm. on our channel, too. Uh, Kimberly wants to know, how can anybody get canned mushrooms for cheap? I don't know. I don't buy them that often. So you may just have to watch. Yeah. Now, the so. only thing I've done is just buy the generic yeah. brand, and they're usually just fine. But other than that. Mm -hmm. Susan says, we remodeled our house over the past six months. Our contractor only had to put two coats of paint on. We had no issues. I don't know. But I'm hacked. Because that's four coats of paint and white primer. That's five coats of paint on top of drywall. So. And with the I primer, that should have helped with the drywall. With it the new drywall. Mary yeah. Ellen says, just order a gluten-free dairy-free cookbook. We talked her into it. Yay. You're going <laughs> to love it. You're going to be so happy to eat normal food again. I'm telling you, all of my recipes taste like normal food. They really do. I made sure when I tested the gluten-free cookbook that everything was good. Um... Yay. Hello. Five says my first biscuits from Dining on Dine volume one. Very good. She made them. Oh, Sounds like they turned out great. Good. Dory little painter's tip. Buy latex exterior paint. Usually better quality, but you can't do that. Actually. I did use exterior paint inside the house one time and it was latex paint, but they use a different chemical in the exterior paint to make it exterior. And it set off some really bad fumes, really bad fumes. I had to prime and paint over it. So no, I would not suggest using exterior. And usually paint that in the stuff house. doesn't bother you that much. Uh -uh. So it must have been bad. Yeah, fumes don't bother me normally, but that really was mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. Um. Rock Island Books or Nikki. Rock Island Books is where I found out about the end times. Have you? Seen seen this site i have no idea what she's talking about do you know what she's talking about uh -uh. i have no idea what you're talking about uh -uh, never no. heard of it so i don't haven't. know yeah i don't know hmm. uh, valerie says she doesn't blame me for not doing a garden after the hell storm yeah i was yeah <laughs> i, I literally which... had just got it planted that morning and that afternoon, everything was decimated. You had a lot of really, a lot of issues last year on your garden. Well, and I was getting ready to bring in my shelving for my plants. And I was like, do I even start any vegetables? I don't know. I was trying to decide if I should even start any vegetables. Uh, Wanda, do you do container gardening on your deck? Yes, I have probably 10, home. 20, 30, 40, probably 60 feet of container garden on my deck. Mm -hmm. Yep, a lot. Um, Shay says, we have Ritz crackers on sale, so naturally now we need to make all to make all your Ritz cracker snacks. Oh, yes, the Ritz <laughs> yes, those are very good. Um, Rachel says she liked Dr. Teal's Epsom salt baths too. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I see it seems to work really good. So thank you, Barbara. <laughs> you turned me on to something good. Christine, I just subscribed to the Super Easy Recipes. Yay! Oh. Thank you so much. You didn't know I had it. I know. I need to talk about it more. I haven't been posting as many videos because um, I just haven't had time to make them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, is John MacArthur the same pastor from Grace Church, the one that, that Ginger Duggar can't, that Ginger Duggar talked, no, he's a different pastor. Uh, John MacArthur is pretty good. I don't, I like Jack Hibbs much better. Yeah. John MacArthur is very legalistic. <sighs> if you want somebody that's just pure Bible... And you can understand it, Jack. Listen Hibbs. to Jack Hibbs. He he explains things so that any a child can understand. But then somebody like me that's been in the Bible for years and years, I get a lot out of it. And he's funny. He's you know he's just so down to earth. I can't recommend him enough. I really can't. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Somebody said uh, Kelly says, "Why do you do sugar in your mashed potatoes? I prefer it without." Actually, have you tried the sugar in the mashed potatoes? Because I guarantee you, 
once you put it in there, you won't prefer it without it. Yeah. You don't taste the sugar. You don't. You do not taste it, but it makes your mashed potatoes say, taste so much what, better. But people don't understand a little bit. It's not like you're putting half a cup of sugar in there. You know, it's just like a couple of tablespoons, if that much, depending on how many you're making. But what people don't always understand, salt and sugar enhances the flavor of a lot of these vegetables. For example, I put sugar in uh, just about a tablespoon in my spaghetti sauce and it enhances the flavor of the tomato. It makes the tomato flavor stronger and more flavorful. And so yeah. people see the word sugar or something and they think, you know, like, oh, I can't have more sugar or this is not healthy or good. But uh, it really makes a flavor. And you know what else? Sometimes that flavor kind of fills you up more and makes you not want to feel satisfied. Yeah. You feel more satisfied when you get some of the good flavorings and yeah. stuff. So, um, did we, did they shake the paint? Yes. They shook the paint when, um, I used it or it, right it really it, was yeah. weird paint. That's for sure. Yeah. Cause, um, yeah. So, uh, that, um, that was not the problem. <laughs> Um, Andy says, I love the super easy recipes. Yes. Oh, I had thought you. about writing a cookbook to go with that. That's just five ingredients or less, but I think that's probably not going to happen now. So anyway, um, Esther says she turned 60 ne next month and have fallen in love with purging stuff. There you go. Oh, very good. There you go. Um, Janie Lee says some people recommend leaving rice at room temperature after freezing to allow any moisture to evaporate. Yes. Yeah. I would do that. Anything you put in the freezer, leave it out to let the condensation yeah. dry out. Sandy says, hubby put electric fencing around our garden. I had actually thought about doing electric fencing. It might help with my fibromyalgia when I hit it. <laughs> Zap you. <yeah. laughs> but I had uh, thought about doing that, actually. So, yeah. And uh, Jay Brown says, don't forget to dig a foot down for gophers and moles. We don't have those here. <coughs> Thank <Thankfully>. goodness. <laughs> the only thing we She's don't have. getting everything <laughs> from the top. If you had to get them from the bottom, too. well, between oh the goodness. squirrels, the squirrels uh, in the fall, I was I like, know. "You little turds, stop <laughs> playing on my garden." And I only have and... sixteen weeks as it is. <laughs> well, it must be good. You must be growing good stuff. It tastes good to them. We so. had a suction bird feeder on our window, <coughs> and Grandma says, "I said, look, a squirrel in the bird feeder, and it was a rat." Oh. oh. <laughs> um let's see denise says or donise i don't know how you say that i'm doing the cleaning when advertisements come off on tv and pick up one room to another good very that's good the way that's a way to do it yeah mm -hmm. paul says love less Feld nick and brandon holthouse is another good preacher jd ferrar although brandon brandon just so you know brandon does focus on prophecy but everything i've heard from brandon has been spot on but you know, I haven't had anything. I like J.D. JD Farrar. He also focuses Sunday. on prophecy. But everything I've heard from him is really spot good. on. Jack yeah. Hibbs is all very good. Uh, Teresa, I have the blue. I uh, have the red version of volume two. Is it the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. We just did. We we did them red, both red to begin with because we thought, oh, they go together. Totally confused people. Huge marketing mistake on our part. Didn't even think about it. So yeah, it's the same book. So don't worry about it. Charlotte, I need to take you shopping with me and smack me upside down the head when I grab something <laughs> I don't need. <laughs> I would love to do that, actually. Not so much to smack people upside the head, but because just I think people just don't realize yeah, that there's alternatives and, yeah. mm -hmm. or that they don't even need to buy it. Mm -hmm. You really don't need the Pop-Tarts. Well, but it's just think it's they like having your own parts. personal trainer. Some people do better with a personal trainer because it motivates you, and oh. sometimes you don't understand it. Could you see me as a personal trainer? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's maybe a good thing Michael's I'm in this business. <laughs> I think it's maybe a good thing I'm on the, in this business. Um, yeah. Uh, Oh, Peggy says, we painted seven coats of paint and we were told it froze in transport. Mm. You know, maybe that's the problem. It could I be. don't know. Hmm. Maybe you need to drive down to Texas and pick up your paint and use it from there. Of course, they had ice storms, didn't they? 
I don't know. I don't know. So Shannon says, I made the mistake of making my boss your fudge brownies from the gluten-free book, and now he won't quit bugging me. Aren't they good? <laughs> they are really good. I know. I miss... I would say I probably miss brownies more than anything. Well, and cinnamon rolls too. But yes. You miss your coconut cream cake? Oh, uh, my coconut cream cake. <laughs> and your coconut. See, this that's... is why I'm all sugar because I have a sugar. Just problem. a little tip. That's what I always bought Tara every year for her birthday is a coconut yeah. cream cake. She loves them. And I made the white cake. So when I was gluten free, dairy free, before it was sugar free, <laughs> I made the white cake in here, added coconut flavoring to the white cake batter and coconut flavoring and coconut to the buttercream frosting. It was delicious. Mom even had a piece and she didn't even know. No, that wasn't. No, that was another one. So who had a piece? Oh, Mike had a piece and he didn't even know it was gluten free. He thought I was killing my diet and I wasn't. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Um, Michelle says on Facebook, I have a recipe for French toast and I love French toast, but I've never made it. Oh, you should. Oh, it's, it's really Make easy. Make sure you get thick bread. That's where people go wrong is the thicker the bread is better, but. And cook it on a low heat mm -hmm. because sometimes it'll get cooked on the outside real easy. And if you cook it on a lower heat, it'll puff it up and just get it perfect. So. I make French toast all the time because it's so easy. And when you make the batter up, if you have leftover, just set it in the fridge and you can use it the next day or something. Um, okay, Rachel, I don't, or Kathy, excuse me, Kathy, my, how, my daughters, my daughter, sorry. My daughters have an aversion to salt, butter, sugar, and fats. Then they wonder why their food doesn't taste like mine but they still refuse to try a little. How can you have an aversion to all those things and even be eating anything? <laughs> eating anything. <laughs> no one, yeah, you can't have food taste good if, yeah. Because if you think about it, salt alone has been so, for millenniums, salt has been one of the most important things to put into your diet. Yeah. You know, they traded, here in the United States, they couldn't get salt very much. And they, it was a big deal to get the salt and stuff like that because it makes the food a whole difference in the food the way it tastes <clears throat> one thing about fat too people don't understand i think this is when the obesity stuff started was when they said you can't eat fat anymore and everybody took fat out of their diet like crazy because what happens is you don't get satisfied the fat any health food person would tell you you need to have a little bit of fat in your diet is just for good health. But people took all of it out. And so they couldn't. Um, so what happened is they weren't getting satisfied. See, the fats, what's make you feel full. And, you know, that's the first thing my nutritionist told me when I went to the functional medicine doctor is you have to start eating more fat because you'll never feel satisfied. Yeah. And then when you feel satisfied, then you don't eat as much. But people mm. took the fat out and everything out. So they kept eating more and more trying to get satisfied. And so that's why I can eat my graham crackers in the morning. I put a layer, thin layer of butter on it. And I can go till noon and eat, not even notice that it's lunchtime yet because it satisfies me so much. Yeah. Penn says it would be great if you did a video that was do this, not that. So, for instance, you could do toast with butter and cinnamon and sugar instead of a Pop-Tart. Actually, I was I already oh, have, is, that's... I have footage already started, like when I was at the paint store today and they had paint covers for $3.49. And guess what they are? Shower caps. Shower caps. You could get a shower cap at the Dollar Tree, but oh, I and just use a plastic bag. They have paint roller covers. Oh, no. Hello, using, Walmart sack. I was going to say just a plastic bag. I was like, so I already started this video, actually, but I didn't think <laughs> about it with is, the food. That's, that's a, a good, good idea. idea. Mm -hmm. We'll probably be doing more of that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we should come up with an app that says Tara approved, Rachel says. <laughs> <laughs> These Pop-Tarts are not Tara approved. <laughs> but what's funny is... I have bought Pop-Tarts before, though. Mm -hmm. I bought like 40 boxes of Pop-Tarts when they were 50 cents each. And then once a week, 
the kids would get one box. And so for a year, they got one box to do that when I found it for 50 cents each. So Wanda, Tara, what in the world do you eat since you're this? <laughs> I, I want to do the same thing. Uh, well, so I, so yeah, I got a snarky comment of the week. Well, Tara, you say food doesn't really make that much difference, but yet you say you're on this special diet and food makes a difference. Okay. Food makes a difference for me because I have food sensitivity issues. So I noticed for me that my CFS and my fibromyalgia isn't as bad when I stay off the sugar, dairy, and gluten. But that's not the main cause of CFS and fibromyalgia. And so to say that you have to go GMO-free, organic, whole foods, plant-based, all this other ridiculous stuff, and you're going to cure your CFS and fibromyalgia, that's just not true. Now, if you happen to have a problem with foods and you do all those things free, and so then you start feeling better, okay, well then, yeah, that's going to cure. But on a whole general See, spectrum, it's like having three illnesses and you're taking yeah. care of one of them. So it helps make the other two not quite not as so bad. bad. So that's why people, that's why this lady, she's getting really, I just banned her. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I get tired of explaining this stuff. It wears us out constantly. First of all, if you're not going to watch all my videos, I shouldn't have to explain it every single thing, every time, over and over and over again mm -hmm. in every video, even though I still sound like a broken record. But. Secondly, 90% of the time, you don't get the whole story mm -hmm. in one little video. So that's the way anyway. a lot of people read the Bible. They just take, you know, a little sentence out that goes along with what they want, you know, want it to. Yeah. Like the do not judge. Oh, Tara, oh. you're being judgmental. No, we are called to judge as Christians. Mm -hmm. I got news for you. The Bible, actually, that verse actually means you're supposed to be judging. You're not supposed to be judging when, if I'm sitting here saying, you shouldn't be having an affair on your husband while I'm having an affair on my husband. That's when you don't judge. But as other Christians, we are to go to other Christians and say, listen, you are not supposed to be having an affair with your husband. And the you Bible it. forbids it. You do it in love. You don't do it because you want to be tacky about it, you know, and things like that. The, if you love somebody and some, they're doing something that's hurting them, you need to tell them. You know, if Tar was going to jump off a cliff, you better believe I would be running there hollering, screaming, saying, don't do it, trying to stop her from doing something that was really going to hurt her. Well, <laughs> or I mean, on your, not an affair with your husband, an affair on your, how do you say that? Uh, well. Without you. was uh, having an affair, you're just having an affair. Somebody if you're other than your married <laughs> to your husband and you're having an affair, you're I don't know how you say so that. So deep in here. <laughs> hey, I do a whole lot more work than Joe does, so there's a reason my brain is fried. <laughs> oh. It's all the paint pubes. All the paint Joe pubes. doesn't have the paint pubes. For me, it's the paint pubes. <laughs> Oh, but dear. like this one particular person who claimed to be a Christian and they, she was doing something that I knew as a Christian that what, she, and in my life experienced it, that what she was doing was going to be extremely harmful for her children, very harmful for her children. And I confronted her on that because she claimed to be a Christian. And I went and told her and I said, you know, I said, I just want to tell you that as a child, I went through what you're doing to your children and you are going to damage your children very badly by doing what you're doing. And then she pulls out and she's like, well, you know, the Bible says the word to love and that's, that's not what my Bible says. And my Bible says that we love. And I told her, I said, then you're reading the wrong Bible. Because the one true word of the Holy Bible says you are not to be doing this and you are doing this and it is going to damage your children. And I was very nice. 
And she was very, um, well, you just shouldn't be judging. No, as a Christian who was not doing that, seeing someone who proclaimed to be a Christian, I don't think she is now, but she was proclaiming to be a Christian. I had every right to judge her and let her know that what she was doing was wrong and confront mm -hmm. her. And as a matter of fact, as a Christian, I would be wrong if I did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would be accountable for not holding her accountable when she's saying a Christian, when she's saying she's a Christian and she's doing these things that are totally against the Bible. And I think God does hold us accountable. They, were among us, but not of us. they are among us, but not of us. Who? That was a verse about that oh, for people who fall yeah. away. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mike said there's a verse about they. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, hello, Ron. But man, we got all our YouTube friends on tonight. <laughs> I need to go watch a couple of your videos. I have got behind on your videos. Um, all right. So, yeah. So don't get me started on that. But anyway, 35% um, off, guys. Our Dining on Dine cookbooks for our Valentine's sale right now. Cheap, easy dinners that get you in and out of the kitchen in 15 to 20 minutes. And you do not have to spend a lot of time um, in the kitchen to save money. You really don't. Mm -mm. Your first trip to the grocery store, you will save money. Please visit us at livinginadime.com. We will see you guys next time. Have a great night. Bye-bye, guys. Happy Valentine's.